And everybody wonders why I said, like, I used to not have facial hair. Look at old pictures of me. I was a baby-faced dude. Like, there was nothing. Now, I mean, it just, it just came in. I started doing manly shit. It came in. You just said it. it. it you just said the same thing. Yes, it all adapts. Like, it has to. I was to. cutting the grass. Like, even, like, shit flying, it hit me in the face. Like, you just don't even... Uh, you don't even feel it. Or you, gotta you be feel... Dumb, you gotta be tough. <laughs> Baby... Oh, look at that guy. Oh. Man, I was shredded. Shredded. Look at that. That was after the... Uh, that was after Dallas you wrote. Would you weigh right there? Uh, like so, right there that like that cuz that's day after? Yeah. The show? That's the day after the show, probably like 203. Cuz I had to make uh, I had to make 202 and then at that show uh go back, Shane, at that show um I ended up I was taking a fucking shit ton of T3 cuz we had to make weight. I was 209 fucking peeled. Like I had we we had to fucking we had to get ugly to make weight. Yeah. And then once uh, once we started the fucking carb up process, dropping water and carbon up, whew, my weight just started weight dropping. I was 205, and then all of a sudden it went from 205 to fucking 202 to 201, and I weighed in at, at uh, two like 200.2. So that carb up, does, did that just ignite yeah, your so body to you're, just... So whenever you're doing... So with Hani, his thing was, he's like, I want to leave no stone unturned. He's like, because here's 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 where I fucked up later on with trying to compensate for some drugs and not doing it the right way. With Hani, he made sure that whenever you're getting ready for a show, the day of the show, your nerve set in. You get nervous. You get fucking overwhelmed. You get anxious. Mm-hmm. Cortisol levels shoot up. Water will come onto your body and hold water. Mm-hmm. So he's like... We're going to make you so peeled that no matter what happens in your head, no matter how you feel, you're going to be diced as fuck. And I'm like, whatever you, whatever you want, dude. Yeah, yeah. Because I was so unsure about everything because yeah. I only knew so much. And at Nationals, that was the whole thing. He's like, there we go. And then did it again at Dallas Europa. Bro, I was shredded. Like, we're talking, I'd probably say, like, because I... I had problems after both shows. <laughs> I'm going to say below 2% body fat. For sure. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. N- Dallas Europa, Dave Palumbo. I'm, I'll never forget because Dave Palumbo said the second you stepped out, he's like, I, everybody in the crowd was like, oh, boy. <laughs> he's like, that was the first time, <laughs> the first time I've seen in a, in a while that I wanted to vomit when I saw somebody. Because I was that shredded. Mm-hmm. I was fucking peeled. And it was just, whenever, to get that peeled to get to that level you're gonna suffer a ton there's nothing that can replace the work because you're gonna take a bunch of shit to get you shredded you're gonna do a bunch of cardio but the suffering of the diet and i feel i feel like very few even well that's top of the world that's what made me that's what made me famous yeah ferocity shredded Yep. When he said it, he's like, you're ferocious shredded. I'm like, what's that? He's like, that's another level, bud. It's like, oh, man, that's a great compliment. Little did I know, like, it was, I, I was just in the beginning, who was the first coach I ever had and the only coach I ever had with it. Go down. Let's see if we can find some. Go to uh, type in. Oh, man. <laughs> type in. I'm ready. <laughs> Seth Ferozzi, uh, uh Dallas Europa. That one in the mi- the one with the three of us down um, oh, the second is. level. That one there, yeah. That was the three dudes that. Uh, Holy fuck, dude! It was me, Yoslav Horlaff, uh, and Tricky Jackson. So that guy on the left of me took second place, and he was pretty pissed. I beat him. I mean, he was shredded, but I was I was just at another level, peeled, peeled. <laughs> like an action figure. Yeah. I was a wild, it was a wild look. Yeah. Tricky Jackson, crazy story about him. You ready? All right. Which so one's that? He's the one on the right. Tricky okay. Jackson, one of the best fucking posers, like entertaining as shit. Yeah. Really cool dude. Um, he, he fucking pissed me off early on in my career. All right? <laughs> really? Yeah. So I know everything about bodybuilding. I am a bodybuilding enthusiast. You could put a bodybuilder up there with no fucking head. I know who it is. Yeah. 
whether it was from the fucking seventies all the way up to today. I just love bodybuilding. I'm fascinated by it. So I was a big, I was a, I was a fan of Tricky Jackson. I knew who he was because he was a short dude like me. Mm-hmm. Anybody that was short, I just related to automatically. I'm like, oh, there's a guy like me. You know, he wasn't a monster guy, and I followed everybody from their amateur ranks and the professionals. So, first show ever for me, the 2009 Northern Kentucky. Okay, I'm all pumped up. First show ever. I was 208 pounds, and I was a watery mess. Mm-hmm. I had fucking crazy shape. Leave that, leave that up there. Pull that back up. <laughs> so we uh, do the show. I take first in the heavyweights. I thought I was going to win the overall, but I didn't. I lost to a guy who didn't compete at the Arnold Amateur. Okay, He kind of... He wasn't able to compete at the compete at the Arnold Amateur because it was March 9th, the, the week after the Arnold. So he came down to this show because he's from overseas. Dude deserved to win. He was a fucking monster. He was shredded the whole nine. Yeah. If that dude wouldn't have been there, I would have won the overall. But I won the heavyweight class, and everybody's like, who the fuck are you? I'm like, I'm Seth. Nice to meet you. They're like, no, dude. Like, where the fuck did you come from? And I'm like, it's my first bodybuilding show ever. And they're like, this is your first show ever. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go do the Pittsburgh. And they're like, <laughs> good luck. You should. Yeah. So, Tricky Jackson's judge. And I'm like, man, I was like, here he is. I'm like, I'm going to go talk to him and see if he can give me some advice. Because after every show, especially early on in people's careers, they want advice from professionals how to get to the next level. Mm-hmm. And I'm all, I'm all fucking, you know, all like Mr. fucking bodybuilding fan right now. I go up and I'm like, hey, man, like, what do you think I need to do to get to the next level? He didn't know it was my first bodybuilding show. He didn't know anything. He just said, man, you know what to do. Don't ask me that shit. And I'm like, no, that's why I'm fucking asking you. Yeah. Like, you dick. Like, I'm asking you what I need to do. He says, you know what you need to do, and just kind of blew me off and walked away. And I'm like, motherfucker. I was like, I don't know what to do. That's why I'm asking you. Yeah. I was one of the best bodybuilders at the fucking show. He didn't know it was my first show, okay? Nothing like that. Yeah. Just kind of went about it. And, and you, every, every pro gets asked that question a million times at every single fucking show. Mm-hmm. So, but at that time, in my state of mind, that fucking lit a fire under my ass. I'm like, you motherfucker. I'm like, I looked up to you. I wanted your answer. Like, I, I love your posing, and now I think you're a fucking prick. <laughs> I was like, I'm, fuck you. You yeah. know, I'm jacked off. So... Go to Pittsburgh, win to Pittsburgh, uh, go to Nationals, win Nationals. That show right there. This is a year later, a year and a half later. I'm now standing on stage with him. <laughs> so we're backstage, okay? Uh-huh. This is before the night show. We're backstage, and I'm like, just fucking, I, I know I'm going to win. Yeah. Just because from behind, my ass cheeks were out of fucking control. I had no water in me. I felt like dog dick. I was going to die. Another funny story about that show, too, in a second. <laughs> so we're sitting around there, like sitting in the corner. Everybody's hanging out together. And, dude, he's Ricky Tricky Jackson is carrying on and just fucking being a riot. Mm-hmm. We're all having a good time. And I was like, finally, I'm like, I'm going to fucking tell this motherfucker my story about him. I'm going to kick <laughs> your ass today. So I told him the story. And he's like, so I told him the whole thing. I was like, you know, I fucking hated you a year and a half ago. I was like, you pissed me off. And he's like, I didn't even know you a year and a yeah. half ago. I was like, yes, you did. We, we saw each other. At, and you were the judge at the 2009 Northern Kentucky. And he's like, yes, I was. And I was like, you told me. So I told him everything. And yeah. he's like. He looks me up and down. He goes, I wasn't wrong, was I? It's <laughs> like, you motherfucker. <laughs> He's like, you know what to do. And I'm like, I, 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 I didn't even win this time. I lost again. <laughs> but uh, he was right. So went and won the show. Yeah, that's uh, funny. Oh, bro. It was, I, because he pissed me off and then he did it again. He's like, I wasn't wrong. Backstage together. <laughs> everybody's laughing, carrying on. That was also the show whenever Cedric and I became pretty good friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. It's a wild so, look. Oh, yeah. That show also. Uh, I don't know if I ever told this about whenever I was backstage getting tanned. So, Hani, anybody, that, anybody that's ever had Hani as a coach knows this dude is invested into his athletes. Yeah. Bro, I mean, that dude stresses himself out beyond belief for a show. Mm-hmm. You want to see a man stressed? Honey Rambod, 
bodybuilding shows. Athletes in it, bros running around like a madman. Mm -hmm. like, way, like way over the top with everything, but he wants perfection. Don't fuck with honey. Perfection. Very, very intense. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I'm winning the show. He knows it, and my tan's kind of fucked up because I got shitty skin, I'm all pale and stuff. And uh, this is right before the night show. Or, yeah, yeah, right before we're, we're running around, and he's feeding me food, trying to so get me a little fuller, give me some sodium, all this shit. And then he's like, your tan sucks. He's like, we need to get you all fucking squared away. So we go back to the tanning spot, and he's like, tells Kevin, Kevin's the sprayer for Jan Tan at the time. Awesome. It was the same tanner I had every single time. Mm -hmm. So he's like, get him fucking tan. He's like, look at this. Clean this shit up, this and that. I'm... I'm butt fucking naked, tiny dick hanging out. It's cold as fuck. Little little pee pee just just sitting there. You're like, I'm so fucking hungry. I'm so thirsty. Just tan me and get me the fuck on the stage yeah. so I can win this motherfucker. So Jake's pumping me up because Jake's always there, and I'm like getting focused. Then all of a sudden, this figure girl comes back. Okay, she was some big deal at the time. Fucking really good looking chick, great tits, nice ass, the whole works, right? So I'm standing there butt naked. All right getting tanned and the fucking one of these dudes that one of these fucking he was one of the tanners and he was all fucking uh high and mighty and was like this chick came back and she needed to get her ta her tan all worked on and like she came back and i knew who she was you know i'm like oh there's such and such you know and she takes her top off and the guy's like avert your eyes i look at him and i'm like I'm like, are you fucking with me? I was like, you pansy fuck. I was like, I'm sitting here with my dick hanging out. I'm going to win the fucking show. And she's over there just looking nice with her tits out. I said, I'm the fucking important one. Put her fucking eyes away. Don't let her see my tiny dick. <laughs> fucking Kevin <laughs> laughing his balls off. He's like, you arrogant fuck. I'm like, I get a pumped up, dude. I had to get my fucking juices flowing somehow. This is my time. This is my fucking time. My <laughs> tiny dick here. She can't see this thing. Worry about my fucking feelings. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was Kevin's Kevin's tanning me like, bro, he's right next to my dick. Yeah. Tanning me. And he just starts crying. Starts <laughs> laughing. He's like, You fucking arrogant dickhead. I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, and but you know, she was she was special just because the guy was trying to fucking feel all important. Man. Yeah. Trying to get laid by the fucking chick that doesn't want nothing to do with him. Oh yeah, I fucking I let I let the I let the arrogance come out. I was like, I'm fucking winning. Dick, don't let her see my tiny dick. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, bro, bodybuilding is fucked up. It is. There's so many things that go into it. There's so many things, like the stories like that, the backstage stuff, fucking nuts, Intense. nuts. Just uh, fucking. Three-quarter of the people are naked backstage. Nobody gives a fuck. No dude gives a flying fuck because I am not thinking about anything but water. Mm -hmm. Water, food. Water and food. That's all that's on your mind. Oh, man. But, yeah, that show was nuts. I tell you what, bodybuilding and doing that is a feeling like no other. Mm -hmm. That feeling right there is something that I, there's nothing in the world that can replace that. Nothing. Uh-uh. I love it. 2009 Nationals, when I won, uh, they fucked up my music to me going out. Mm -hmm. If you search on YouTube, Seth Ferrosi 2009 Nationals, my video will come up. Search it. Comes up. This is the biggest show I've ever been in. The biggest. It was the biggest bodybuilding show leading up. There it is. Click it. So pause it real quick. Oh, go ahead, let that play through at the ad play. So before a show was when it were, things were still done on CDs. Mm -hmm. so you had to hand in your CD. Yep, pause it. Uh, play a little bit so, you can, so I can get that there. Yep, right there. So there I am, about to walk out. I broke the fucking cardinal rule. Do not go out on stage until your music begins. Okay? Well, I wanted the music to start when I was in the middle of the stage. So it, the music, my CD was supposed to start at zero. Okay? And then stop playing at like one minute and 38 seconds or some fucking shit or whatever it was. However, I can't remember exactly. No. 
They started at 1.38. So the music was completely off. My whole routine got fucking thrown off. Biggest show of my life. I'm in first. I know I'm in first place and pretty much going to win. Yeah. The night show, completely fucked. Okay, go ahead, play. So I'm about to walk out. Is celebrating his birthday today. He's 25. He's it was my birthday. Watch. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Pause it. I was like, you motherfuckers started it wrong. And there was, there's a thing that it, once the music starts, do not stop. Just go with it. I've seen that look on your face before. Go ahead, play it again, Shane. Good. Oh, yeah. Shred it. Yep. So there it is. And then all of a sudden, you motherfucker. <laughs> oh my I've gotten that look a few times. How has that not been made into a meme yet? How is that? Not oh, yeah, that fucking, that mother, I looked at him like, you motherfucker. <laughs> I wanted to freak out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. I never I never noticed that. Oh, yeah, they play, it started at the wrong, I wanted them to end at that time. Yeah. But no, it started, and I, there was a cardinal rule, don't stop, just keep going. You fuck up the flow of a show? <laughs> Look at that jawline. <laughs> so then I just said, fuck it. <laughs> what the? Oh, so what'd you do after you got off stage so go with it just just go let it play so i just go with the whole fucking thing i was like i'm just gonna do my mandatories immediate first thing i was like i'm just gonna go through my mandatories because i know they look good i was like i'm not gonna switch anything try and fuck this up man i was fucking that's crazy shredder damn I feel like they don't have this level of coverage anymore for shows. No. Like, this is one of the best, like, this quality... Was, this was national... This was this was the biggest amateur show in the game. <laughs> nice. So, I get... Uh, I finish it. I was all scared. Finished. Walk off stage, and then I saw Mark Alvisi was right there. Uh -huh. Mark had just turned pro at the 2009 USA's. I walked off, and I'm like losing my shit, so fucking mad. And meanwhile, Mark's grinning ear to ear because he was he was working with Hani at the time too. And he's yeah. like, "Man, you fucking nailed it!" <laughs> he's like, "You killed that shit." He's like, "You're fucking winning this show." He was all pumped up, and I'm like, "They fucked up my music." I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. He's like, I do. You're going to win. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no way, dude. And he's like, yeah, you were fucking peeled, man. He's like, you're good. He's like, <clears throat> he's like, nobody looks like you. It was exciting. Man. Yeah. That was one of the, uh, that was a good time. But Cedric turned, Cedric uh, was the super heavyweight. Jeff Long was the heavyweight. I was the light heavyweight. Um, and uh, backstage at that show, too, Guy Sister Nino was the one tanning me, was the one, like, oiling me up. Bro, there were so many things about that show just over, early on then and how everybody has become so successful. Guy Sister Nino, I'm in the fucking zone mm -hmm. backstage getting oiled up for Nationals, this show. Backstage, and I'm fucking in the zone. I'm like, this is the biggest fucking show of my life. If you don't win this show, you're fucked. Because I had no money at the time. Mm -hmm. I had to win this show. I'm laying next to Dr. Presk at this show. <laughs> Guy Sister Nino is fucking oiling me up. Jeff Long, Cedric, they're all turn pro with me. Bro, Guy Sister Nino is oiling me up. Like, fucking, I'm just mean mugging this whole fucking time. And he goes, hey, dude, you need to calm down. He's like, you look like you're going to kill somebody. And I'm like, I am. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was fucking dead serious. He says, loosen the fuck up, dude. Loosen up. And he's talking me up. And then he goes, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. And he goes, do you know who I am? And I'm like, you look familiar. <laughs> and then, and then, well, the whole thing was he had this huge fucking beard. 
okay? Yeah. And then he's like, it's Guy. And I'm like, ha, ha, I didn't even recognize you. He's like, I'm fucking oiling the insides of my legs up. <laughs> he's like, I'm ready for, I'm ready to see you win this show. He's like, loosen the fuck up. Like, I had no idea because he, he came over yeah. to help me out and make sure I was good. <laughs> like, I didn't even recognize him, didn't even fucking nothing. You were in it, dude. Oh, bro, it was so much fun. Man, bodyboarding shows were fun. I had a blast. That's the thing that I miss the most is the backstage camaraderie with everybody. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. It, it was a lot of fun. There, the bodybuilding is a, there really isn't any animosity, not too much amongst bodybuilders unless somebody fucked the other person's woman or something. Yeah. It's really the only thing because everybody's suffering. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows they're going through some shit. The only real rivalries, uh, I'd say, were like Cutler and Ronnie, mm -hmm. like Jay and Ronnie. That was a rivalry, but they were still cordial with each other. Uh, Phil and Kai, I think, actually hate each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is back to, like, being a thing again uh -huh. for the Olympia this year. Oh, yeah. I saw all the trolling. Yeah, do you see It's it pretty all? good, yeah. yeah. I'm like, fuck, it needs something. I was like, <clears throat> why doesn't... Fuck it. You guys just do it. Just see what you guys can make of it. Make it a fucking show and get some money rolling. You know what I mean? If Thor and, Thor and Eddie Hall can do it, Kai, Phil... Start fucking hating each other. Just agree to, to be fine with each yeah. other, but fucking make, it, make some money. Make it exciting. Get this bitch going. Kai fucking looks the same every day every day of the year. He's like 100 years old, and he's an alien. Too. Yeah. Him and Mike O'Hearn. How about Mike O'Hearn's kid? Holy huh? shit. Mike O'Hearn's kid is a monster. He's jacked. How does he have shoulders I think and he's, I think he's one. He's one, and he has, he has muscle yeah. on his body. He has killer rear delts. It, so do you think... That Mike O'Hearn, yeah, do you think, yeah, look at this thing. If you go on his Instagram, on his there's a recent post. Yeah. Look at that kid. Yep. Look at that fucking kid. <laughs> look at that child. How's that possible? Stop clicking on it. I'm trying to get a closer just look. Zoom, just zoom in. I can't. Command plus. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Why does he look like the rock right there? Because he's, he's made the original of... Rock. He's made of... He's Titan, dude. He's the Titan. <gasps> dude. Man, you're... It's okay. It's a rough one. Man, Holy shit, kid. he's fucking jacked. Look at the kid. Good for him. How's the kid like that? I don't know, but I love Mike O'Hearn. Mike O'Hearn's such a good dude. Yep. We talk about him. I think this is probably the seventh time on this podcast we talked about him. It's like shortly after, he always comments on something of mine. And I feel really special. He might do it just for me, I think. He probably does. He probably, I mean, he's the nicest man on the planet. He's the nicest guy in the industry. I would just love to have like a quick lunch with him in California. Like He'd tell you how good you're the doing. Gym. He would. Oh, yeah, he definitely would. He'd be so impressed with you losing weight, he'd want to hear all about it. Because he knows me so well. <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the. This is what we preach, though. You and I and everybody here, uh, you can tell us, a, if you have success with something, mm -hmm. I'm so excited to hear about it. Yes. If you lost 100 pounds, I want to be like, please tell me about it. Yeah. Like you not running and now running fucking, now you do 10Ks all of a sudden. Bob runs 10Ks. <laughs> yeah. I would want to hear about it. Like, tell me about it. How did you do so? What did you do? Like, I am so excited to hear about people's successes from nothing, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you were just there and now you're doing something extravagant, bro, if you're doing something that most people don't do and you're excited and you're becoming better from it often, mm -hmm. like every day. Come on, give me it. Yeah. That's like Mike O'Hearn. Yeah. Like, and he'd know about it, and he'd be like, yeah, man, that's great. You're looking really good. I really like the scruff you got going on on your chin, too. It looks really good. I mean, you're probably wearing smaller shirts, filling them out better, not you're probably tighter in your chest and arms instead of your stomach. He would definitely say that. Oh, he'd say all that stuff, and you'd just be like, can we hang out like every day? Thanks, Mike. Can you just call me in the morning, FaceTime me? He'd be like, sure, man. And then he'd bring over the dogs that are just the the greatest dogs on the planet. The best dogs ever. I, it is insane. Such a good guy. Yeah. He whenever he said, uh, uh, what was it? Probably before all this COVID shit hit, uh, I hit him up. We there was a there was a, uh, a common thread or something, 
And then uh, he commented, and we were shooting the shit for a second. And uh, he's like, if you ever come out to California, he's like, hit me up. We'll, we'll, we'll grab a workout. We'll do a YouTube video, this and that. And I was like, likewise, dude, you come to Pittsburgh. I was like, we'll do a workout. We'll do a podcast. Love you have you love to have you on yeah. everything. And he's like, absolutely. He's like, I come through Pittsburgh at least once a year. So, I'd love to have him on. I'd be nervous. I would love. <laughs> <laughs> you'd wear your Sunday's best. You'd be ready. Fuck yeah. I'd I'd be dressed just like him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, and uh, but with him, he's had such such success in the fitness industry for a long period of time. Yeah, like a very, very, very long period of time. More covers than just about everybody in the industry. He was an American Gladiator. Like, wh- how did it all even start? And where, 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 where are you going right now? Like, I mean, his his look is one of the most iconic looks in in bodybuilding bro you don't even if you don't know who he is like say you're a normal person don't know who he is show it to like maybe like a 40 or a 50 year old woman yeah they'd be like oh yeah i saw him on the covers of magazines years ago mm-hmm. yeah mike o'hearn yeah at must one you name it every every magazine he was on the cover of it's awesome mike o'hearn but uh yeah all right we got we got rolling there with some <laughs> bodybuilding did. and some good times yeah love it all right, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the HWMF podcast. I'm your host, Seth Ferrosi, here on a beautiful Monday morning here in Western PA. We are back to work. Yes. We, we are, are back to work in this area. It is beautiful. I'm here with my heterosexual life mate, Bob. Hello. It's thin. Just the, just the right amount of scruff on your face as well. Thank you. Looks good. Yeah. I can't do that. I don't have, I don't have the face for it. A little jealous. I like it. If I was good with a blade, I would want this like shaving cream and straight razored every day. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm into it now. Oh boy. Uh huh. Yeah. I like to feel the wind. Like I like the air. Feel the wind on the skin. Yeah. Mm. And people are noticing the jawline. Yeah. It, you have. You have. I never knew it because you had such a fat neck. Yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I know. <laughs> Uh, bro, you, you, you were always thick, and now you're here, and you have you have a very strong, dominant, uh, square face. Thank you. It's a good jawline look. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it feels good. I feel great. I have more of an alien head. I have a big head up top, because I have so much brain power. Yeah. And uh, not as much <laughs> jaw power. <laughs> I Which is be- weird, because you like talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen to this guy. <laughs> Right, right. I don't. He's care. like, I gotta throw this one in there. He's like, I guess. He's like, he walked right into that motherfucker. Yep. I gotta take my shots when I can. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Good, shoot your shot. Um. But uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, good. everything's good. Every- keto journey uh, going uh, well. All right. So uh, you've been on the keto journey for over sixty days now. Yeah. You've thing. lost well over twenty five pounds. Yes. You run ten k's. You run at least fifteen miles a week now. Mm-hmm. Um. People, have, we've gotten messages, we brought it up, and we really didn't get into this. Uh, people ask about your success mm-hmm. and how you got to where you are. And over the weekend, I got I got hit up a good bit. Uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know if I got somewhere on, uh, like, on media outlets. But uh, people ask me, like, how I deal with success and, and, and uh, the hate, like the hateful comments or the trolls and things like that. It was like th- all of a sudden, like three people asked me, and then people, and then I got more messages about, uh, uh, like, what do you do with people that kind of hate on you in your personal life? Mm-hmm. Like, we're on a, we're, I'm on a bigger level. We're on a bigger level now. Whenever people s- put hateful comments on, it's like we're like, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> like, all right, cool, you're paying attention. Uh, it doesn't really bother you. But if you have someone in your life that's close to you that says something ignorant mm-hmm. or gives you a little bit of shit, how do you deal with that? Sure. But with you, people have asked. So, I mean, uh, you've been on this keto journey. You've lost all this weight. You've mm-hmm. kind of changed who you are. you got the jawline now. <coughs> I don't think you're going back to thick neck, Bob. No. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Mm-hmm. I think you'll be very dead set on – you're p- pretty much set on even going further than this. Yeah. Um, this weekend – you were in deep keto, and then you said you were going to do a small cheat meal if you felt like it. Mm-hmm. So, did yeah. you? Yeah, so um, Saturday morning, I had uh, another hour, 60-minute run, 
Kenny wanted me to try to hit five and a half to six miles again, about the same pace. Mm-hmm. I told him I wanted to do seven, mm-hmm. so I did seven and a half mm. in an hour and seven minutes. Oh, bro. Bro, you were <laughs> flying then. Yeah, so me and Kim ran. Was uh, that like eight minutes and like yeah, eight thirty? Eight thirty? Yeah, average. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, but Kim ran it with me. We uh, we kind of separated from each other for a while. Like I was ahead for a long time, and then the last mile and a half, we got back on each other's same pace and then finished it together. Oh wow, great! But uh, so I got done that. And I didn't know, I still didn't know what I wanted to do if I was going to do like a keto cheat or like do pizzas. Uh-huh. So I tested myself, my ketones when I got home. I thought I was going to just be completely depleted, dehydrated. Yeah. I didn't know what it was going to look like. And they were over two. I saw that. So I'm looking at this. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, it's been two full weeks now since I've had an actual cheat meal. Like a carbohydrate cheat. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to just give it to my body. I was like, I'm going to be sore tomorrow. Like, I just feel like I needed nutrients. Yeah. So we did the shock the body. Yeah. So we did the pizzas. Uh, the homemade pizzas in the Weber. Yeah, on the Pizza Stone. Nice. Which were fucking fire, by the way. Like better than restaurant quality. Uh, some restaurants. Yeah, some restaurants, and like it just tasted fresh because like you did it yourself yeah, and yeah, fresh ingredients. Highly suggest getting a Pizza Stone. They're like thirty bucks, forty bucks, and they're awesome. But uh, so I ate. A full pizza and probably like half of another one. And then Kim also made Bobby Flay chocolate chip cookies. I saw that. He reposted those as well. I told her no dessert. Like, we weren't going to do any dessert. And then I just hear her starting to whip something up. And I come in and there's she cookie whip dough. Some cookies up. Yeah. So we do, uh, do a bunch of cookies too. Sunday morning, ketone levels were 0.7. Still fully. You were still in yeah. keto after you ate all that shit. Yeah. So we worked out. I tested again last night because I'm like I just want to see. Yeah, you can't. I, I needed. I need gauges. I just yeah, need to well, see. Well, that's what this is all about. Uh, I was up at point nine in the evening, so I'm sitting there. I'm like I technically didn't break keto. Like I didn't. The meal didn't do what I wanted it to do, which was break keto. keto. So. So that's what you wanted to do. I I want to because you want I feel to break like keto. I just I feel like that's what has been working for me oh, as far as like you break it get your body out of it, and then get your body back into it. Yeah, it's like a shock, like like if you'd be carb cycling. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so that's the that's the analogy at, or equation to it. At least for what I'm trying to do right now. Sure. So I ate, uh, we ate clean all day yesterday, back on keto, and then last night I was like, fuck it, I'm going to finish off these cookies, yeah. which I did. Uh-huh. And this morning after my cardio fasted, still 0.4, which is te- technically still in ketosis, just on but the lower. Point five is the is like it, nutritional ketosis. Is, yeah, yeah. So, so you couldn't kick your, You almost couldn't kick yourself. I out. I probably did. There definitely was a, a time where I was probably kicked out, but I still woke up this morning with my energy. Which two weekends ago, when I did my normal cheat, yeah, that I woke a up. Week. I woke up Monday and was felt like Lethargic shit and poopy. The this morning wired again, man. So like now I'm anxious to see. I'm not gonna test myself the next few days and i want to see end of the week it was taking me 10 days to rebound from a really nasty cheat meal now it seems like just a few days apart man this is fascinating it's it's yeah it's insane and i I get a ton of questions people asking how to get started and all this shit and i just give out the knowledge that i have gained so far and what's kind of worked for me yeah and it's not going to work for everyone but um well, here's the gig. What you're doing is not easy either. No, it's not. No, no. Like Kim's Kim Kim is a hell of a cook, so she can she cooks some great keto meals. Uh, you know, you're, but but I would say that in anything that anybody does to be successful, mm-hmm. you have to be prepared. Yes, that's it. Like yeah. you can't win keto. No, you can't. And even even if you do, uh, like, not only is Kim cooking all my shit, but it's it's new food all the time. New recipes, yeah. Keeping it fresh, keeping it from being like, yeah. fuck, like yeah, that. But you're also uh, even people that are in that position. You're also very determined. Mm-hmm. You're determined. Like it, I say this, whenever you've been fat, mm-hmm. you don't want to be fat, so you aren't fat. You're like, I don't care. Like, oh, Bob loves pretzels as much as Seth. Bob doesn't eat pretzels. Why? 
because he wants to be in shape. He wants to lose weight. He wants to feel good. He wants to look good. Mm -hmm. He wants to run miles. Yeah. The pretzels aren't worth it. All of a sudden, the balance changes. Yes. That's what it is. And and everybody has to find that in their life of what they want that balance to be. And and a lot of it, and along with it comes sacrifice, comes mental mental uh mental stability, mm -hmm. willpower, <clears throat> all that comes into play. Well that that's what I was I was gonna get to there. Like people are asking, don't you miss fruit like fresh fruit and like more veggies? Well, yeah. I'm, I'm like, yeah. Absolutely. I was like, of course. I was like, but or or uh do I notice like if I'm losing like strength or losing like size? I'm like, yes, yes. I am. You are. And they're You're like, oh, don't, aren't you like all upset? I'm like, no, I'm not training to get bigger. I don't want to be huge. Right. I want to be in shape. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, between between that, like you need to know your goals. Like if, if your goal is to be putting on lean mass right now, I he mean. It's not it for you. It's not. No. Um, but that means you have to be on a strict carb cycle diet. Right. Absolutely. With no fucking snacks. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, it's crazy. I, I just stopped questioning. Like I'd always ask so many people for advice or for opinions or I'd look shit up and I just question it beyond belief and just not do the fucking yes. shit. Yes. Like stop questioning it and just do it. Yes. And that's what I did. And it works. That, that is the, it's, it's a hard concept to get until you do, because in the beginning you were 285 pounds whenever we started hanging out. Yeah. And then little by little you got down from 285 down to fucking 250, 240, 230, mm -hmm. 225, and then back up to 245 and all around there. Yeah. But to get to the point you are of 210 pounds or 212 mm -hmm. or around that area, Bro, it takes a lot of dedication. Mm -hmm. And there's no more questions. <clears throat> there's no more talking. There's just doing. Yeah. And there's going to be, there's got to be something that drives you. Mm -hmm. There's always got to be something that drives you. And you have to have a little bit of fucking shit in you. Yeah. You always got to have that little bit of like grit. Yeah. And you, and that's the part that, uh, that you have to control because that grit can affect everything in your life. Me, like when I was bodybuilding, like we were just looking at. That's a look that not many people attained. Mm -hmm. Not many people attained or continue to attain that look because it's very, very demanding. Mm -hmm. It's hard. I didn't eat. I just did fucking work. What was the goal? Winning the fucking show. Mm -hmm. At any cost necessary. Because that was my ticket. That was my ticket. Mm -hmm. So everything else was disregarded. Yep. Everything else is disregarded. And that goes, and that's that sacrifice part of it all. And that's, I mean, that goes with any type, anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and people ask you about, people, that message, that group message we saw about that dude was asking, well, how, where did Bob get started? And were you guys friends before this? And how did, how did you become so successful? Well, pretty much everything that we've worked for our entire lives, every single thing led up to the point of you and I meeting. Yeah. All the fucking shitty jobs, all the good jobs, all the little money, all the lots of money, all the everythings. The second you and I met and did this, that was whenever you and I were like, yep, here it goes. We're going to put all our money in a pile and we're going to do this 50-50. You have a set of skills. I have a set of skills. We're not going to step on each other's toes. We're just going to do it together. So all the skills that you learned, all the jobs that you learned up until four and a half years ago when you and I started AAR in end of 2015... And everything that I had up until that point, we said that we will go for broke, put all of our money into a pile, which was like 2200 bucks, mm -hmm. and all of our skills and all of our time and all of our emotions into a pile together. Yep. And then said 50-50. 50-50. From then on to now, that is why when you're an owner – when you're an owner in this position, that's why you have what you have. That's why it's nice to be, that's that goal of financial freedom. Mm -hmm. That's that goal because I didn't play it safe at all. You didn't play it safe mm -hmm. at all. And, and whenever it gets to that point of what did you do to get here, I did everything I could. Yeah. Every single thing that I could, I did to get here. And that's why... Uh, when people say like, how do you deal with the hate? How do you deal with like the, the chirping bro? 
do you know how many times I heard what we were doing was dumb? Mm-hmm. Bro, we were spending all our money. You sold your uh, you sold one of your cars to live for a year. Bro, I left I left a job that was paying well. Mm-hmm. Wasn't paying me what I deserved. No. Uh I I built I built a company before all of this. Yeah. Up to like a 5 to 6 million dollar company and got fucked over. And left it. Walked away from it. Wasn't fired, wasn't let go. No. Nope. Left on good terms, just walked away from it. Uh, so, like, to say I, I made some, di- like, every difficult life scenario that was thrown at me that gave me opportunity to maybe go to the next level or to do my own thing or to level up, I fucking took it. Yes. Every single one of them. Yep. Uh-huh. Even during the hardest times of my life when I had no money. Yes. Yeah. That. So I go back to that whenever people ask me, like, like I got asked, uh, like, how do you handle the, the hate? Mm-hmm. Trolls, number one on the Internet. Bro, it's cool. Don't worry about a troll on the Internet or anybody saying anything. They're paying attention to you. Mm-hmm. That means that they do. There is something that's grabbing their attention. But at the end of the day, the Internet is just a place where uh, people express their feelings and emotions and pretend that you really aren't a real person. Right. You know what I mean? And there's way more good than there is bad, in my opinion. Especially with us. Mm-hmm. With us, fuck. There's, I, you, we don't usually talk about this because it, it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Because it's just about feeling good and living your life. Yeah. Bro, live your life the way you want to live it. Be a good person. Work hard. Be a hard-working motherfucker for your family. Yeah. But that negativity comes, I noticed, probably the most from like personal personal level people when you're doing something that's different or or new or something that hasn't been done like you and i were doing in here Mm -hmm. people were like this is really fucking dumb what the fuck are you doing yeah my parents told me it was stupid Mm -hmm. the people that raised me told me it was not a good idea (laughs) like you think this is gonna work yeah i do i don't actually think i know it's gonna work Mm -hmm. and it's like jesus christ here seth goes again off on a fucking mind run that he's tried to do something like this before and it fucking didn't work Mm -hmm. and it's dumb and here comes another failure and seth's gonna have to redo this and fucking work hard again and in my head i'm like absolutely i'm gonna keep taking chances like this because that's who i am Mm -hmm. i don't care if i fail and fall on my face again i already did it I did it in bodybuilding. We were just showing my successes in bodybuilding. We weren't showing the fuck-ups. Mm-hmm. The fuck-ups were way worse than the successes. The highs that I had from success, multiply that by two and go the opposite fucking direction. Okay? So I already fell on my face in front of everybody. I already got laughed at. I already got made fun of. I was like, all right, fuck it. I fucked up. Mm-hmm. Everybody fucks up. Who cares if you make a mistake? How you respond to that is what matters just as well as the successes because I learned a whole lot more losing and having failure than I did when I won. And after you win a few times and then lose a whole bunch, now you're in this position that we're in and you're like, I know I'm gonna, how I'm going to handle myself. I know how I'm going to do things mm-hmm. because you've had taste of both, Yep, just like you. Hence why we have what we have today and why we act the way we do because good shit's all I want. Yep. And when it comes to the people in your life that say this is stupid or why you're trying to do that, why you're trying to be something you're not, do you actually think you'll become a pro bodybuilder? Do you actually think you're going to be successful with this? Do you think that this is a good idea? Why would you do this? Why wouldn't you focus on the things that you're sure of in life? Excuse me? What the fuck was that? Who says that? What kind of person says that? Oh, you're being real with me? Well, let me be very real with you. Go fuck yourself. This is my life. I'm going to do what I want with my life how I want. If you don't do that, you'll always be in someone else's place. They'll put you in your place. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't fuck with that. No. Hence why I love hearing about people's success stories. Everybody's got a story, man. Yep. Everybody's got something great. I take pride in what we do, hence why we make such great supplements. Mm -hmm. Because I still think of myself years ago. I hold myself in that regard of what I would do if I did this. Mm -hmm. Hence why we still get all of our shit printed in America. 
Hence why we support American jobs. Why we've never gone overseas for printing. Fuck you. That's why. Yeah. Does it cost me a little bit more money? Yeah, it does. Do you think I give a fuck? No. Because there are certain moral things that I have inside of me that I do. Mm-hmm. That's how I roll. That's how we roll. We said that's how we're going to keep it. So we're going to. End of fucking story. Yep. Those things and people, when they ask us those questions, you have to you have to be ready for people to say the most ignorant things to you if you have success. And it's okay. Because here's the thing. Do not feel bad for anything that you have in life if you worked for it. Yep. If you put your time, effort, emotion, sacrifices, your family's time, all your shit, all that quote unquote blood, sweat, and tears into something and you had success, you made money, you became what you are today, do not feel bad for a fucking second of anything you have. You deserve it. So when I get to ask those questions, that's how I feel. Because I know what it's like to be broke. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what it's like to be broke and live paycheck to paycheck, spend money that I didn't have, and have to find a way to pay fucking rent. Have to find a way to pay for groceries. I've done, I've been in that position quite a few times. And two and a half, two years, two and a half years ago when we started Axe and Sledge, we did it again. Mm -hmm. All our money that we made from AAR put into a pile with two other dickheads and said, let's go. Yep. If I would have told everybody what we were doing, like my parents, they already knew we were having success and they're like, okay, you guys are on to something. If I told them, I'm taking all of my money that I just made, all of it, and I'm going to put it into a pile with two other people, and we're going to start this. Are you fucking retarded? Are you stupid? That's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Everything's going so well with Everything's AAR. going why so well. You? Why would you do something like that? Because mm-hmm. that's who I am, and that's how I roll. If it would have went belly up, there would have been a lot of people that said, I told you so. Ah, that's too bad. Those things are real in life. Mm -hmm. But we don't talk about that negativity because typically I don't like I don't like it in here. But people have these questions. Yeah, they want to know. So I figured this is a time to talk about it. Well, yeah. And I mean, even even if you are on the other end of this and you're just coming up and you're trying to figure out your path and, and you are living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Don't put out that negative energy when you see someone that is doing something that that you see is bigger or better or has something nicer. You can't you can't say, "Oh, must be nice." Must be nice. Or, "Oh, you really changed. I miss the old you." Fuck you. You can't think like that. No, that will. They're put- out. They're outworking you. Yes. In every aspect of their and life. If, and like you and like you said, if you're in that come up phase, get ready to fail. Yeah. Bro, like I said, I failed many times. Bro, I thought I was at my forever job. I thought I was at my forever job that eventually I'd be like part owner of this company and I'd be making the big bucks and I might not have to work and I might <laughs> I might not have to do anything. Little did I know that was the mentality that was keeping me down. Yes. And then once once that once we linked up, it was I was like, okay, no. There's a whole other world to it. I need control of what we want to do because we have good intentions. We have good heart. We have good family. People, there are a lot of good people supporting us. Not many talking shit. I'm like, oh, it's in you like, know. Don't get don't get to skewed. My parents weren't like, don't do it. Oh no, yeah. They were they were all for do what you want, Seth. Yeah, but they were like, this is this you know just so you know. Mm-hmm. And because we we. We didn't just like, like leap. We would fucking jumped. Oh yeah, we jumped in. Oh yeah, but it was that thing where the good intentions, the good, the, bro. I, our message for all American roughneck was paved way before we even had a logo. Before we even like said we were going to start a business. Before we even were worried about it being our income. Yes, we both had full time jobs when we started All American Roughneck. Yes, no real intention on leaving it. No. Just had this idea and we we're like, hey, let's 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 push this to become something because I think that the all American working man, family man needs to be cool again. Mm-hmm. 
I was like, that guy needs to be fucking cool because I wanted to get back into bodybuilding, needed something in my life, let's do it. And if I come into bodybuilding, I need to own something. I need to own it. Yeah. That, so that, that success that we've been steamrolling with was all built like on, on those values. And, and, I, and the beautiful thing is, like you said, these people have been like this forever. Mm-hmm. They just didn't have a name. Yeah. And, uh, and I say all this because no matter where you are in life, if you are catching some shit from anywhere, you're always going to catch a little bit of hate. Doesn't There's matter. There's always going to be a church. Yeah. If you're in a neighborhood and you buy a brand new car or a new truck and you're like, fuck yeah, I'm going to drive. I got my new truck. I'm really excited. Yeah. There's one asshole in that neighborhood that's going to be like, huh, must be nice to be able to do this. Or they'll be like, oh, so I, I, I mean, I probably would have bought a Chevy. And you're like, is this motherfucker for real? So, and there's a couple different ways to go about dealing with those people. <laughs> yeah. Me and the position I am now um, depends on the day. Mm-hmm. There's two people you get with me. <laughs> Either like, all right, Jim, just walk away. Yep. Or, oh, yeah, Jim, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Give him the thumbs up and walk away. I don't know which one I got, I'll be that day, but it's very drastically <laughs> different. Uh, yeah. But. But at the end of the day, the best thing to do is just be a good person and move on from it. Because Mm -hmm. those people, I believe that the people that have negative shit to say all the time have some really bad things going on inside their body that they don't even know how to cope with. So they just blurt it out on you. Yeah. They blurt it out on people that, that are, uh, that actually are like happy. Mm -hmm. Bro. And I, and I, I mean, and with me, the big happiness change was in my life, why I'm so positive. Cause that's the other question I get. I probably get a hundred at hundred a week easy. Mm-hmm. Why are you so positive? How are you? You're always so positive. Motherfucker. I know what it's like to be down in the dumps. Mm-hmm. I know what it's like to be down in the dumps. Yeah. Through, through, through no money, through a divorce, through addiction, through all these things, through having kids going through becoming a single dad, bro, there are times in my life where I was so far down that I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I felt so bad. Mm-hmm. I had two little girls. Everything was a mess. I was building businesses. I, my family fell apart. Like kids are crying at night. I'm crying at night. I know what bad feels like. I know how bad it can be. And that's why I don't wish what I went through or those feelings upon anyone. They shouldn't, you, you, you don't do that. Mm-hmm. I want good. So I molded my life to be nothing but good. I wanted positivity. So I'm going to do things in a way where it builds me and everyone else around me up. Yeah. That's why I'm this way because I don't want bad feelings. If bad feelings start creeping in, I start getting a little funky, I start getting a little aggressive. I start getting a little ignorant. I start getting like, ah, a part of me comes out that I don't really like. It's still part of me, Mm -hmm. but I'm like, no, good, good has to come because good will always trump evil. Yeah. And, and, and you got to work, you got to work for that positivity. It's, it's probably one of the hardest jobs (laughs) that, that anyone can deal with is dealing with staying positive. Bro, it's easy to tell somebody like some shit and get mean with them. It's hard to go. Bro, are you okay? Like these trolls that say things, mm-hmm. it's like I look and I'm like, ah, they're just internet trolls. But I'm like, sometimes every now and then there'll be that one that bites you on the back of the neck that you're like, oh, you little cocksucker. She's an asshole. Wow, you really got me, you yeah. motherfucker. Good job. And you still don't reply to him or anything. But I think about those people as I'm like, because I'm in a good position. And mm-hmm. I said, I know how, I know what it's like to feel like shit. Yeah. And I think about that pos- person to say those things publicly and i'm like man where are you at in your life bro you you are going through some shit right now that fuck dude because i used to think like you i used to have those thoughts of saying things like that to people i I, i'm not into that Mm -mm. Uh, and, and i think what is going on what's going on in your life did you lose a significant other did you lose a parent are you and your family fighting did you lose your job are you having a hard time taking the next step in life? Did you just break up with your girlfriend or have you never gotten past your, your ex-girlfriend that broke up or, or, or slept with another dude or sucked another dick or did something where you're just like, 
you can't get over it and all you got is hate inside of you. Mm -hmm. Because those are all things that bring out that hate. You know, whenever you're in a relationship and all of a sudden you get cheated on and you're like, man, fuck the world, dude, fucking this and that. And you're like, oh, you're broken. So then you lash out and you say things and all you are is a ball of negative energy. Mm -hmm. People that lose a parent, like a close parent, and they're never able to, to collect their thoughts ever again and we're talking like months and years of just negativity and that the world's against him. My mom wasn't supposed to die. She wasn't supposed to die. It's okay. I, I, I know what you're, what you're saying, but you need to build yourself. Mm -hmm. you, you know, those are things that, uh, why, or maybe the person's just had a really rough life mm -hmm. and they believe that the world's against them. So those, that's why whenever I see that, I'd love to help that person, but I'm like, I'm, I can't, you can't feed into it. Cause then like negativity breeds more negativity. Yeah. So positivity is all I want. I want to hear people's success stories. And that's like, that's our whole MO. Yeah. And, and I mean, feeling that way and being that way and, and being happy for other people when they succeed. I mean, that, that's all, uh, it should drive you. It drove yeah, me. Right. Like when I see somebody that has success, I'm like, if you can do it, I can do it. It's just going to snowball. Like, like if, if, when I added fitness and really started getting my shit together, when we first met, I was 275, 280 pounds, 290 in high school. It was rough. I get in better shape. My businesses get better. My relationships are better. I mean, I say it all the time, yes. but it's, it's, it's the truest fucking thing I can say. Yes. If you take care of yourself and then you just can't slack at any one part of your life. There goes that thing that I said, and we talked about all the time. You can't be one-dimensional. No. I th my thing in life is you have to be multi-dimensional. And we have talked about it for years now. Mm -hmm. Being Having one dimension, being a one-dimensional person is the worst fucking thing you could do. Mm -hmm. Because the second that that dimension is taken away, you're nothing. Yep. So if you have multi-dimensions of yourself and who you are and what you put your effort into, you take one dimension away, you're still a bad motherfucker. That's what. That's whenever we coined hardworking motherfucker, mm -hmm. because I don't want you to just be good at one thing in life. I want you to be good at all things in life. Whatever you're going to do, go do it with everything you got. Every single thing you got, go do that activity. You'll never be the same again. Mm -hmm. You'll be magnetic. People will just be like, what the fuck is it with you? And you don't have to be on a huge scale. You could just be you from the fucking neighborhood. Whenever you go to do your running, you run. You or put you everything you yeah. got into it. You start stacking those wins, man. It's it's game over. <laughs> you become something completely on that people are just like, wow. Mm -hmm. Be multidimensional. Because with this, I got lifting taken out of my life. Mm -hmm. Fuck, dude. Guess what? So I'm not going to lift upper body for eight weeks. I still got lower body. Mm hmm I still got my family. I still got my businesses. I still got all my stuff in my life. One thing was taken away for a short period of time. I'm cool. I still got lots of other stuff to do. Mm -hmm. If this, if lifting was all I had, if that's all I was, I'd have nothing. And that's the scary part because we also talk about when you go all in, go all in, put all of it into it. Well, Put all of it into everything you do. Yep. Be a hardworking motherfucker. Be mm -hmm. unstoppable. And that's yeah. That's what that's what we do. I mean, I I know. And then there's it's like how do you, how do you have all, how do you have the time to go all in on all of them? Well, you you just you make the time. Yes. You add this, and then you do that for so long, and then you add this, and then you forget the work associated with keeping this up. And then you can just start adding them on, adding them on. I thought I, I thought I maxed out like 25 times in the last four years. <laughs> you don't have problems, just more work to do. I'm more active. I'm, I'm busier with work. I'm, my relationships have never been better. And I keep adding and adding and adding and adding and adding to the plate. It all comes full circle. Nutrition, exercise, work relationships if you don't put everything into it your nutrition can fuck up your exercise your exercise can fuck up and not having not doing the right nutrition and having the right act level of exercise will fuck up your mental game 
which if your mental game is fucked, you're going to have a hard time with your business. If your business isn't doing as successful as it could be, it's going to fuck up your home relationships because you're like, I need to do better at business. Full circle, motherfuckers. It all starts somewhere. All those are important, and that's why it's all making sure that they're firing on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. If one starts to slip, you need to be able to recognize it, correct the problem, keep fucking shit up. It's okay if you fall off the wagon. It's okay. It's okay to step, take a step back as well. <coughs> God bless you. Thank you. It's okay. You just have to be able to continue to move with it. It's intense. It is. But I got those messages from people and um, uh, just about that. And like we said, we, we, we don't, and we don't, the negativity, fuck that shit, dude. I don't want none of that. Yeah. Think you need to be the best motherfucker you can be. And you and I just both know what it's like to eat shit. We know what it's like to be broke. Mm -hmm. We know what it's like to sit there on the phone in the morning being like, holy fuck. It's not like we, it, that's one of the reasons that I just, I, I use those thoughts, those old feelings. I never let them leave so that I always keep myself in a, in a humble position. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that I don't like doing extravagant things or smoking $10 cigars? No, I love that stuff, mm -hmm. but I'm very grateful. And I like it because I worked really hard to get to this position yep. because I know a whole lot of people that own other supplement companies and own other apparel businesses and own other things that do it differently than me. Make, they, they might make more money than me, but I really don't give a fuck because I'm doing what I believe is right. Mm -hmm. I don't, and, and I'm not gonna focus on them I know how it works, but I'm going to focus on what we are doing and the good that we're bringing to people. Yep. Because everybody that's listening and our customer base and our fans and everything are legit the best motherfuckers in the game. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we could have a better customer fan base or a better team of people that work for us. I would not trade one motherfucker at our companies for anybody. Yeah. Not one. No fucking way. I will take our team up against, up against fucking anything. Yep. I love our people. And our customer base is a part of everything that we do. The demo crew, oh, my God. Oh, my God. They're an army of fucking positive animals. Yeah. It's all it is, and it's, the, and it's that's – I couldn't have enough great things to say. I love what we have. I love what we do. I love the people. And that's, I mean, with everything going on right now in the world, we've built a company based on being a hardworking motherfucker, the all-American roughnecks, the rowdy, rough, uncouth, fucking good motherfuckers of the world. You swear with the best of them, but you ain't going to outwork that working, that hardworking family man. You ain't going to do it. Mm -mm. And at a time like this with COVID and all the shit that went wrong, it's kind of like, okay, everybody, it's time to go back. It's time to get back to being prideful and actually leveling up. At a time like this, whenever we got put into these positions and essential, non-essential, all this fucking horseshit that the politics have played, it's time to show everybody what America is. It's time to show everybody who America is. Those hardworking motherfuckers that are proud to be who they are. Time to level up. Everybody needs to take the next step. Be an even better person than you were last month. Mm -hmm. Work even harder than you did last month. Every day, take the steps forward to become a harder, more intense, positive, bad motherfucker. America. I love it. <laughs> We're back to work. Everybody's back to work. Bro, there's people on the fucking road this morning. Back to work. Took me seven more minutes than usual. I love it. I didn't mind for a second. I sat in traffic nope. for 10 minutes. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. There's so many fucking trucks out in Western PA. Yes. Truckers are back on the road, moving shit. I saw the gas guys are back back in town. Yep, I love it. Uh -huh. Put everybody back to work. Let's go. Be safe. Treat people with respect. Even though, no matter no matter how you feel about it, level the fuck up. Be an even better person. Be courteous to people. Show them respect. Be a great human being. I'm ready. Good intentions all yep. the time. Gyms are open in Florida. I'm excited for that. Florida, uh, Florida, Florida is like the new Texas. People are people are back. People are already a week back at the gym in some states. Bro, Florida is definitely the new Texas. 
<laughs> I'm gonna say it. They're they're on that. They're getting to that same level of not giving a fuck. Yeah. Of being like their own country down there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like Florida, Texas. Texas will always be the the Lone Star State of just fucking West Texas cowboys, nut jobs. Yep. But uh, Florida's starting to climb the ranks. They're starting to be. Uh, they're starting to be pretty crazy. Yeah, I love it. It looks fairly look looking into Florida. It looks pretty normal there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was watching Singerman. I saw him on his stories. They went out to eat. I think it was last week. They were at a restaurant. Um, beaches. Uh, he was somewhere. He went. Uh, he went somewhere like to uh, some uh, beach. I don't know where it was. I wasn't listening. I just saw him like clicking through. But the beaches were closed. Nobody was there. But there was people like around and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, if he's able to go to like a hotel or, or an apartment or some shit like that, I mean, they're yeah. they're moving. Well, I saw uh, uh, down where my brother and sister sister in law live. Like my favorite restaurant we'd go to down there. Uh-huh. It looks like they're opening this week. Nice. And like it's it's the high end like mm. beach view shot. Ah, uh, yeah. It's called the Beach House. Oh, what a cool name, bro! It's so sick. Yeah. One of the coolest restaurants I've ever been to. I mean, just because it's literally in the sand, like you sit like in the no white shit. white sand. The sunset there is ridiculous. I think I'd like to do that. Yes, I'd pay for a dinner just for the sunset look. I, eating a steak. I think there's, I think the people that own that restaurant, they own two others that we've been to down there, uh-huh. or maybe one other, and it's like. Their locations are what they're known for, like the scenery yeah. and how it looks. They I mean, everything a, in fucking Florida is beautiful. They paid a pretty penny for that real estate. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or it's, or they've been there for since day one, oh, you know? Yeah. But really cool spot. Um, I, I want to go back. I'm a seafood guy now. I, know, I mean, it's great. That's my shit. I love seafood. Yeah. Oh. I was just going to ask. Did you, did, did, he, did you get a message too? Wait, from who? Bala. No. I didn't get a message. Okay, well, I'm going to make an announcement. Whoa. i got to go into my thing here and make sure we're good. Um, oh, what is this? You motherfucker. He, uh, for everybody that's wondering, the best seafood that I've ever eaten is from Wolf's Fish up in Boston, Massachusetts. Bala is the head fish cutter there. And he, uh, we ordered from them and he actually ended up sending it to us, a nice box full of halibut, salmon, scallops, sword f- swordfish, swordfish steaks. Yeah. It was out of control. So he sent this all down to us. I got to find it. He sent it to us, and then we were all over the top about it. And then um, he sent me a message this weekend. It's got to be on Instagram. Let me go look. He sent me a message this weekend for anybody that wants any of Wolf's Fish. Please go to their website. I think it's wolfsfish.com. You could check that real quick, Shane. And use our code. He gave us a code for all of our fans. Use Seth Ferrosi 10 for 10% off. Man. Yep, wolfsfish.com. I don't... Whenever people were trying to order previously... Uh, they said they had a hard time because they were only shipping to the East Coast. Mm. But I will say that this is the this is the cream of the crop. This is high end shit. It it is fucking tasty. The swordfish steaks were the best steaks I've ever had. Yeah. Best swordfish, best seafood steaks I've ever had. Swordfish mm. steaks. The halibut was like a white fish steak. You didn't have the scallops, did you? No, I didn't eat the scallops. Tasty. They're ridiculous. <laughs> so we uh, we just put in a massive order for all of us here at the office, and then Bala ended up sending me this message saying, we're, we're sending it to everybody that wants it. Yeah. So cool thing because it is it is a high-end yeah. market. It is the cream of the crop. Mm-hmm. Seth Ferrosi 10, 10% off at Wolf's Fish. Bro, for them to do 10% off of, of, of that food is pretty great. It's awesome. It's really, really awesome. So... You had, did you have some meats, meats last night? Oh yeah. So we ordered Snake River Farms. Yeah. Uh, steaks. It's, uh, some steakhouses use Snake River Farms as their steak, as their, as their farm to order their steaks from. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, you got the, uh, the ribeye fillets mm-hmm. and then the pork chop and the tomahawk pork chops. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> we got little six ounce fillets, mm-hmm. and then I I didn't I didn't want to eat red meat again. I'm kind of watching my 
I'm not watching my figure. I'm watching my fucking blood. Yeah. Uh, stop eating so much red meat and testosterone, Seth. So <laughs> stop taking so much testosterone. I eat red meat like twice a week now. Yeah. Um, instead of every day. <laughs> 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 but uh, so we got we got the tomahawk pork chops and the uh, ribeye fillets. Mm-hmm. Bro. Crazy. Bro. Those ribeye fillets were out of hand. Out of hand incredible don't get the eight ounce either do a six ounce because mm-hmm. it's easier to cook yeah they were perfect size like two flips and then a side real quick side to get a sear a little more mm-hmm. bro adeline was like whatever meat that was was the best <laughs> meat i've ever eaten and i'm like you liked it and she's like that was the best steaks you've ever cooked I used the Eddie V salt and got a crazy crust. Uh, oh, you had some left over. Oh, oh, fuck yeah. I got a huge bit of it. So yeah. I crusted the outsides, mm-hmm. like burned the shit out of them. Yeah. And then Emmy's like, the crust is crunchy and super salty. I like it. So I'm like, <laughs> man, this is great. I feel like a fucking pro fucking right now. Nailed it. The, uh, the pork chop, the tomahawk pork chops, yeah. out of hand good. I was gnawing on them. I like fucking ate the bone clean. I'm into pork chops now. Crazy good. But. I was really impressed with my cooking skills yeah. and Snake River Farm steaks. Awesome. They uh, there were some really expensive steaks on Snake River Farms. Yes. We ordered the we might have ordered a two and a half pound tomahawk. It didn't come yet. That one's coming. It comes fresh. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I indulged. Yeah. I didn't I didn't get that one, so I didn't cook it yet. That's going to be like when I get my blood work back, and they're like, "You're you're allowed to be an asshole again. Go ahead." And we're like, "Okay." I got a thousand uh, megs of test and two pound steak. <laughs> No, Seth, that's no. dumb. Stop doing dumb shit. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I, sorry. I don't know what I was thinking there. I'm sorry, Doc. <laughs> Seth. Yeah, yeah, we got, I got a tomahawk and then uh, we ordered the the bone in ribeye. Yeah. Like the, I think, 32 ounce or 36 ounce. It's this fucking thick. Or, yeah, yeah. So me and Kim will split that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm, uh, but no, it's, uh, yeah, I was excited. So between the seafood, Snake River Farms, really good stuff. Um, mm-hmm. It's nice to indulge in it. Uh, seafood, you usually, depending on where you live, Bardeen's right up the road here, mm-hmm. they have a crazy fucking steak. Uh, they just, a crazy assortment of red meat because... I've never been there. Bro, they're their own butcher. Mm. <laughs> own slaughterhouse. Yeah. It's like, it's right there. It's uh, Their steaks are expensive, you know, like $16 a pound mm-hmm. of New York strips. Okay. So it's pricey. Yeah. But... Whenever you're slaughtering your own meat, it's kind of like, uh, there you go. What do you What do you want me to fucking say? I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, yeah, that's a. <laughs> I, I, it's a good that, Friday night thing, you know, Saturday night. And the thing is, it's supporting your local because they are a local farm, and I, and you and I. That's one of the reasons that we buy it is because they are in control. It's not from a mass market. They're killing the animals themselves. They have a way of doing it. It's been family owned for fucking. Yeah, it decades. should it should be more expensive. There's yeah. more time. There's more care. There's more love put so, into it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to take a ride up on Thursday. and uh, I just want some. the farmer's market to open. I want to get bags of veggies f- for like nothing and get my I meats. I can't and wait. I can't wait until the farmer's market opens again. It should be soon. I'm also wishing on the heat. Like I just want it to be hot. I'm so excited this weekend for the warm weather. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, got, little, I got a little pink. Bro, I got a, I got a, I got a brace burn. I wore a cut off flannel to cut the grass. Kim loved it. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> look at you. Nice, sh- nice shirt. Or it was like, nice shirt, you know? That's how I was it was. Like, yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. I walked by her <laughs> three times. I walked by her three times, like, to make sure she saw it. <laughs> Third time she saw it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then I went to cut, realized I had no fucking fuel. Oh, like, none. Man. Like, I couldn't squeeze you anything dick, out you, of it. You dick. Had to you go have, like, up. like, seven cans at your house, too. I know. I went up, filled up five... Yeah, 25 gallons, Mm -hmm. and then one of them fell over on the way home. I could smell it on the way home. Jesus Christ, God damn it. Fuck. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. Typical. Uh Mm Uh-huh. And it was still wet, like really wet in some spots on the property. Yeah. Mine was pretty dry. Mm Mm-hmm. I cut cut Saturday. Cut Saturday, did some work on Sunday, read up everything. Well, we didn't do anything Saturday. It was really too wet, and then- I thought it was going to rain yesterday, and we were coming back from the gym here, and I'm like, you know what we have to do? She's like, I know. She's like, it's going to be nice. We have to cut today. I'm like, yeah, "Yeah, we have to. Oh, yeah. (laughs) But, hope, good weather, good times. 
Looks like it's fairly warm this week. I didn't even look at the weather. 70s I don't even, all I week. I don't even fucking look at the weather. I just go about life and say whatever the fucking weather's going to be today, I'm, it's going to be. Oh, bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This weekend, it's going to be almost 80 degrees. I will take it. 75 and sunny on Saturday? Mm-hmm. Man. I think Kim's going home, see the fam this weekend. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. Hey, this weekend, uh, gymnastics is... We're, we're, we're going to open up to all of our private members. Nice. Mm-hmm. The girls had a, uh, the mom's playing like something for Hannah, like a baby shower thing. Yeah. So uh, it was here in the parking lot. Nice day out. And it's kind of like, okay, we'll see how everything goes with all the bullshit social distancing and all that. Mm-hmm. So we get together. Nobody gave a fuck. <laughs> Everybody's done. Mm-hmm. Everybody's like, listen, don't go around fucking, don't go around being an asshole. But let's get this bitch started, and everybody's excited for everything. Yeah. It was beautiful. People That's were great. together, party, hang out together, cupcakes and sh- and cookies for the kids. They were drawn with chalk all over the fucking parking lot. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. It was awesome. They should be doing that. It was it was awkward at first. I bet the kids just stood next to their parents and stared at each other. I'd like to play with you. Like they were playing like a mind control thing with you or like (laughs) they were talking to each other, like with their eyes, like to play with you, but I haven't been able to touch anything or anyone for two months, but I love you. Hello. I'm over here. Yeah. Like it was, they were just staring at each other, like going back and forth. And then the moms were like, no, you're allowed to go. Go ahead. Play. Go ahead and play. And then they're like, is this a trick? You testing. You don't let me do anything right now. I've been staring at the fucking wall for two months. But no, we're good. I had a I had an awkward situation with a guy at the gas station. Like he older guy was going in, he was putting his mask on, he dropped his mask and like the wind blew it towards me and it stopped like right at the bottom of my boot. And I'm like I wanted to pick it up for him, like, hey. I was like, You want me to get that? I was like, I'll get it. And he's like, No, no. He's like, Don't need anyone freaking out on us out here. <laughs> he's like, Gotta do it. I'm like, Yeah, dude. I was like <laughs> I was like, I wanted to get it, get it for you. He's like, I appreciate that. <laughs> How fucked up is that? Yeah. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Yep. Then we both grabbed the same door that everyone grabs to go in the gas oh my station. God, that's how that's how everything's been going forever. How fucking okay, we'll we'll get on the soapbox for this for a second. Real quick. But how the fuck is stupid is all this shit? <laughs> fucking Pennsylvania's got their heads so far up their fucking ass it's not even funny. Mm-hmm. It is out of hand. All the shit, everybody's ready. It, the numbers are out. It is what it is. Wearing a mask is very stupid, by the way. If you think wearing a mask is going to protect you from anything, you're wrong. Anybody that's ever taken an OSHA 10 class knows anything about respirators and being fit tested. If you don't wear the respirator properly, it doesn't work. Listen, you can think whatever you want about the mask. Just stop wearing it in the fucking car. Oh. What are you doing in the car with it on? Or outside. Or outside. What are you doing? I, uh, you, you out in the wide open. I listened open, to a, a bunch of uh, Cameron Haynes stories over the weekend, <laughs> and every so miles he'll he'll just get on and be like, "Man, he's like, I just ran past a dude on a bike. He's like, we're in the middle of the fucking woods. He's like, no one's out here. No dude has a fucking mask on. He's like, who are you catching this from? What are you doing? He catching it on the tree, the bear, the fucking." He's like, man, he's like, I've never seen anything like it. You're not wearing the proper mask. No. No, you're not wearing the proper mask. Bro, the dude picked the mask off my boot (laughs) and put it on his face and went into the the, Here it comes. Here it comes. You ready? All right. I'm safe. I got my my t shirt over my face. What the fuck? It is is the craziest thing in the world. And. I was so I was watching I was watching the TV The Last Dance and some of the commercials. I also realized that The Last Dance, uh, Humera paid a lot of money <laughs> to have their advertisements. Reese's paid a lot of money to have their advertisements on there. That's all I pretty much saw. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the PA has this thing out right now. Their how to stay safe: wash your hands for twenty seconds. Try not to touch your face so you don't con- contract COVID. Wash your hands for twenty seconds. Try not to touch your face. Mm-hmm. And they said, stay inside. Stay inside. And then they were like, and if you go outside, wear a mask. And I'm like, 
What kind of fucking general terminology is this? You want me to stay inside? How about you go fuck yourself? If you, everybody knows fresh air is good for you. Fresh air, sunlight, vitamin D. Like, you need these things, and you're telling people to stay inside? What is going on with you? How can you be a health professional telling you to stay inside? Don't go outside. Don't go, don't go into your front yard and get the fresh air and sunlight. That's where you're going to get it. Wait a minute. You're going to get it out there. You're going to die. You're going to die if you go outside. Hey, careful in the sun. Careful out there. <laughs> you're going to cut the grass? Bro, Don't put do a it. mask. Don't do it. Mask. You're going to die. Fucking put that shit on. <laughs> Stay inside, Bob. Don't go outside. What the fuck kind of advice is that? This is nuts. I'm having a hard time with it still. And, and just the whole, the whole way they're going about things. I don't like it. Kind of you forgot, know, I, I'm kind gonna, of forgot I'm gonna, about I'm gonna, it. I'm, so that meme, like, obviously, carry a gun. Okay? It's fucking my right. I'm going to go into a place without a mask on. I'm pro- I might get arrested. But I probably won't. That's my right. Not wear the mask and, and, and go in there and just be like, we'll be like, you're not wearing a mask. We're like, well, I heard a story that wearing a ma- carrying a gun and wearing a mask isn't a good idea. <laughs> Like, wait, what? Because, <laughs> I mean, that's the whole thing. Like, a fucking three months ago, if I put a mask on, walked into a store, people would be like, no, no. Especially they find out I'm carrying a gun. Two. <laughs> uh, I, I got to do it. I got a fucking chance. It. If you get a phone call from me, that's why. I'm hey, so Bob. Uh... Hey, Bob. So... I didn't take the gun out of the holster. <laughs> I just wasn't wearing my mask. I wasn't wearing my mask, and I told him I had a gun on me. So they called the cops. Jimmy showed up. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't happen. But I think uh, I got to do it somewhere where they know they know me well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be fun. Hmm. Fucking crazy. It's so nice out there. Like, just stop fucking everything up. I just... Do you see that there was a, the boat parade, the Trump boat parade? Yeah. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Fucking everybody in the boats. There's fucking hundreds of them. I love boats. I love blowies. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's cool. There, There's actually quite a few boat boat guys. Like, Oh, yeah. Like our fans and customers. Listen. Like big boat guys. I would, uh, uh, me personally, with my lifestyle, vacations aren't a big thing for me. Mm-hmm. Just with gymnastics, owning the gymnastics gym, with Hannah running it, like it's not like, uh, I know I'm low on everything. I'm th- super thirsty today. So n- we don't have a lot. That's one of the reasons of the home. Like we would like to purchase. <sighs> what are you doing? Fuck, Man, you are ev- all over the it's place. everywhere today. right now. Fuck. God damn it. Sorry. It's okay. Go ahead. So well, we, uh, we're not big on vacations because we don't really have the time. We'll probably go on one vacation. Jesus, you're like a six-year-old. There was almost too much in here. How did that happen? There Why was, would Gatorade do that? I took the cap off and the water it went up. up. Yeah. The pressurization. I thought you were squeezing it like a six-year-old. And I thought that's what occurred. Didn't. Fuck. It's all right. It's not cool if you don't pee your pants. <laughs> <laughs> um, but So I looked at it like uh, we need to do things for weekend. We need weekend activities yes and that the whole boat thing because it was it's nice going down to the fucking it's nice going down uh to the fox chapel yeah hanging out there being able to go out on the boat hang out and i was thinking to myself that's probably where i'm going to invest Mm -hmm. probably going to do a boat yeah i'd like to just because it's that we need weekend things here for us as our family because we aren't going on vacations more than once a year yeah we're going to do weekend things Mm -hmm. and in the in the fall Fall and winter, my life is gymnastics. Yeah, tied up. I, I miss it. I was I bitched about it for a little bit. I regret doing it now. I need to shut the fuck up. Gymnastics is good. I was told that I shouldn't go to all the meets. Mm. I was told. Mm. I was told I'm not going all the meets. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hannah's like, you shouldn't go just because it stressed out. It stressed out Adeline because mm-hmm. like, I'm so intense. Yeah. So it's better that I'm not there for some of them. Uh, Emmy doesn't give a fuck. Emmy's just she's gonna. I think Emmy's going to be if she sticks with it. Emmy will be stupid great gymnast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Big time. Uh, but probably not this summer. Uh, I'd like to definitely go enjoy some boats, go down there more often on the, in the weekends mm-hmm. and go look at it and hang out and then see what I'd like to get. Yeah, next need, summer, I think I'm going to. I need I to like figure it, it out. I need, need a weekend thing for me and the family. Yes. To be able to go out on the water on a Saturday or a Sunday or a Thursday afternoon, uh, be able to go do those things in the summer because we are always, she's all, uh, uh, always doing gymnastics. Mm-hmm. So whenever we have all this and all the businesses and everything, we don't. I like working, but I also, I need a weekend thing. A week of vacation is not good for me, by the way. Mm-mm. I lose my shit. So, weekend things. Boats. I know you know all about boats. You look at fucking, there's not one thing that you don't know the highest end of the highest end of anything. So I was thinking about, I was thinking about that, because I was talking, I was talking to Kim about something over the weekend. God, oh, give me the heebie-jeebies. But, uh. <laughs> She's like, you You know so much about, like, so many different cars and boats and bikes and this and that. I'm like, yeah. I was like, I know a ton of it. She's like, why do you know all this information? I was like, okay. I was like, I know all this. I was like, but like, I don't know sports. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't know athletes. I don't know statistics. I don't know who won the fucking 96 World Series. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't do that shit. No. Uh-uh. I just focus on, like... Things you like. Yeah, that's it. Some people like sports. I like I like just information about cars and mm-hmm. shit. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the boat the boat that you told me about that you showed me, uh I was like whenever we were talking about this, you know, months ago in the Pavati. Pavati's, yeah. I was like a <laughs> fucking sick name. Yeah. Uh, show me a Pavati. Yeah. I don't even know how to spell it. Yeah. Pulled it up, bro. You're like okay. They're like the big time, the big, the big high end wakeboarding boats. Yeah, they're fucking. They're like, they're like the BMW of the water. Yes, pretty cool. The interior, the lights, the whole nine. It's yeah, cool as fuck. Yeah, if you don't know, go look up a P- Pavati. Uh, so I went the other direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, pontoon boat. Yes, slow, big, wide, wide. Seth. Yep. Seats and coolers and. Slides from the double decker. Yep. There's there's really cool shit on the water. So I'm going to. Uh, I've been. I was looking at them and I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be good because for me, that's the the weekend trips. Yeah. Those are what my life needs, uh, for sure. Well, yeah. Being able to, you know, the girls can bring a friend. You yeah. Know, hang out for the afternoon. Yeah. With with. Yep. Yeah, you need weekend stuff. I don't. We can't. We don't have a lifestyle. Oh Jesus! We don't have a. We don't have a life set up for uh, for for anything more than that. Mm-mm. Need a. N- yep. I mean, Christ! It's me and Kim. Like we don't even have kids, and we don't have time for a fucking week's vacation. <laughs> no. No. Uh-uh. So that uh, uh, it'll probably end up being you get this fucking. Obviously, you'll get the fast, sporty boat, and I'll have the slow, wide. Little party boat. We'll use it yours way. We'll boat. use yours fucking. way more. Yeah, but it'll be way cooler to. I don't know. I'd feel like Pablo Escobar on a Pavati. I'd be like, let's do cocaine and if I do get hookers and live a different life. See, like if if I do get a Pavati, I'm gonna also need to be at a level where like I can have a matching truck and trailer. It all has to match. <laughs> no. If you if you look on Pavati's <laughs> IG, everyone that owns them has matching shit. It's almost like they won't sell it to you if you don't have it. Here, I'm gonna he pull. can justify just about anything. I was just going to say, do you hear this bullshit? Yeah. This is fucking... This well, is how, I'll, I'll show this you is one. This how Bob's head works. Yeah. Okay. Let's Look, see it. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's uh-huh. that's not a Pavati marketing piece. That's just a regular Joe. That bo- uh, uh, Yeah. <laughs> that's not just for the sh- their showroom. Oh, so oh, then man, I'd have to ship them my truck out when they're building that to, Bro, to match. Bro, what the fuck is this thing? Yeah, right. Look at these fucking boats. Yeah. This isn't this. What's that? That's a yacht. Uh, I also, uh, I saw AMG and Brabus. They also make boats as well. What? Yeah. 
Oh, I bet you that's fucking nuts. Dude, Bro. this boat looks like a spaceship. This is Wait, are you on Pavati? Yeah. Yeah, guys, look at Pavati. Look at the Tell them Bob sent you. <laughs> They'll know. Use my sure. code. <laughs> right now, I don't know. I can't stop smiling and laughing. This is just fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, bro, that's a cool boat. Oh, they have a dirt bike that matches it, too? Guy's wearing a suit? Jesus. Man, Man, I just can't stop looking at it. This is... This is... It's just the coolest thing. Yeah, you got it. You have... You don't take this in the Allegheny, by the way. Uh, No, I was going to say, that goes in, like, a nice, clean lake. Yeah, you wouldn't put this in the Allegheny. No. It doesn't even look real. Like, these ones don't look real. Mm -mm. They look fake. Yeah, they look, like, digitally made. Yeah. I think yeah. they are really cool. No, they're very real. Some of them are digitally made. Well, I'm I'm fucking soaking wet. Just fucking look at no. I feel like I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm not getting a fast boat. I'm going fucking slow and steady. Yep. Mm-hmm. I like to go fast. I know you do. I do too, but I just uh, I have this little bit of dumb in me. Oh, the white. Put that in the Allegheny. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> we'll come. It won't come out the same color. <laughs> It'll be two tone. Yep. Turquoise. Brown. <laughs> oh man. But uh, so we'll get on this subject here. Also, this week, uh, since we're talking about our, we've been talking about our businesses a good bit. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I was really happy hearing those questions and I hope those, I hope people that listen, gain something from it, but we are relaunching AMN this week. Yes. American made nutrition. Uh, that is our other supplement company. A lot of people ask me why I don't talk about it very much. Okay. Uh, American made nutrition is we've put our entire team has put a lot of time into this revamp of American made nutrition. Um, whenever we first started Axe and Sledge, Mike and Pat owned American Made Nutrition. They started it. That was like all American roughneck for us. Yeah, right. And then we, uh, we all became one, and now we are all owners of everything that we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're all equal partners. American Made Nutrition needed to be revamped. It needed to become something because we have Axe and Sledge. Mm-hmm. Uh, with everything that we do in our lives, Axe and Sledge is on the higher end, on the higher of highest ends, of the sports nutritional industry, the bodybuilding industry, the whole, I mean, we have, we, we are known for using patented ingredients. We started the trend in this industry Mm -hmm. of using patented ingredients in all of our products, putting the fucking patented logos on the label, calling the manufacturers of those fucking ingredients and saying, we want to do this. A lot of people are doing it now Yeah, because, and it's good for those manufacturers too, because they're getting big business. Other people are doing it. We've had success with it. We have a fucking fuckery look to everything. Well, pineapple express action. Who the fuck does that shit? Us. Because it's who we are and why our fucking, why our customer base is phenomenal. Yeah. We We put a lot of time into everything we do with our entire team. Yeah. Not just us. Yep. So American made nutrition. We wanted to revamp it so that there was no competition between Axe and Sledge and American made nutrition. Yep. With everything that you've done with your life and the direction you were going in with what we were talking about previous to this and the questions that we get asked constantly to do with Axe and Sledge. Mm-hmm. When are you guys going to do this? When are you guys going to do that? When's this product coming out? When's that coming out? Also, we have a way of doing business with all of our retail stores. With every, rest- with every wholesale account that we have, everybody knows that we are a customer service business. Yes. Not only do we have great products, but we have a fucking phenomenal sales team and shipping team that is going to get your shit out in a timely fashion so that once we take your money, you get your fucking products right away. American Made Nutrition. We need to revamp everything. It is, and it is now becoming, we'll post about it, and Shane, you can put it in the bio and let everybody know. Do what you can for everything with it. Um, American Made Nutrition is all natural, all natural, no artificial sweeteners, no artificial flavorings, uh, vegan protein, keto product, We went the direction of all natural, no artificial sweeteners, no artificial flavorings. We went that direction. Yep. Um, The protein is vegan. It is, I mean, bro, vegan protein is a huge thing. Everybody asks about it. Everybody's always like, when's when's Axe and Sledge going to do a vegan protein? 
we're not we're not we're not doing vegan with that right that was the whole angle we took with amn that's where we are it's uh we're relaunching it, it is launched this thursday what's this thursday 21st may yep. 21st mm -hmm. 8 p.m typical on thursday for us mm -hmm. but it is a vegan all natural protein phenomenal yeah, and I mean, you know more about it with, than I because you've been using it. Yeah, uh, with what you're doing with your diet. So. Yeah, I mean, I I take it. I am, I'm not vegan, but the macros um, on the vegan protein is what I was m most attracted to. Mm -hmm. I mean, less it, there's no less than one carb per serving. Yes, um, which was a huge thing for me because there's two or three sugars in farm in fed. farm fed. So, and the biggest thing I found because I've been speaking to a few people on Instagram. Uh, that are vegan. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing is we, this is probably the best tasting vegan protein that you're going to fucking find because most of it is kind of tough to, to very to tough enjoy. to sweeten, very yeah. tough to flavor. Yep. Uh, and that's the other all natural sweeteners. Yep. There's n anybody that anybody that has any adverse effects from artificial sweeteners, mm -hmm. they know that's why they can't take certain things. Yep. Artificial flavoring, same thing. Some of them upset their bellies. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, the vegan protein, mm -hmm. which is a huge hit. They both actually taste pretty fucking good. Yep. Uh, we've sampled. It took us a while to flavor it. I didn't think I'd ever drink that many vegan proteins. <laughs> I know. They fucking suck. Yeah. <laughs> the, the once we started learning how, once Pat nailed the flavoring, that's whenever I was like, oh, shit. Like peanut butter banana. Oh. Peanut butter banana is actually pretty good. It's fucking out of this world. I was like, at, at the point that we got to, and that's where it comes in, like, you, to, to whenever you start flavoring things with natural sweeteners, mm -hmm. to get the good flavor, you start going to an upper echelon, you start spending a little bit more money. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, it goes from, all of a sudden, to, to, sweeten, it per, to sweeten it with this sweetener per, per, per flavoring, like another 50 cents a can. Yeah. 60 65 cents a can from what it's already costing i'm like oh bitch yeah this is gonna climb quick and mm -hmm. it did but again hey dude whenever you're dealing with this demographic of people who want it you're just gonna spend the fucking money yep yep so we have that then uh the keto products yeah the keto bhb flow. salts mm -hmm. which are essential everybody knows it's essential when you're on it whenever you're on a ketogenic diet mm -hmm. um the bhb so it's keto flow yes phenomenal flow. product I've taken them when I was doing it, and uh, they were, I don't know, just something about them. Again, you've been doing it, so you mm -hmm. were lead on this, of the flavoring profiles. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so phenomenal the, products. Uh, the, the similar products, it has, uh, I mean, if you've, if you've taken the, like the salts and the keto, it, it's an electrolyte blend in yes. there as well. It's so important. Like, it almost tastes a little salty. It is. It's fucking it is. salts. But... Uh, for how it makes you feel, the boost of energy you get from yes. it, mm -hmm. from it just being any any keto person knows about them. They're yeah. essential. We are having we have three flavors, correct? Yes. Clementine, mm -hmm. fruit punch, yep, and I believe watermelon. No, it's a uh, blue ice. Oh, you went with the right? blue ice, yes. blue ras, yes, yeah, blue ras, blue ice, whatever. We the, did try watermelon. Yes, <laughs> we did try watermelon. We probably tried. We tried. I like others. seven others. <laughs> the uh, I, I, I'm a sucker for the fruit punch. You are a whore for fruit punch. Yeah, you're so upset. Tropical thunder from the grind isn't out, <laughs> so this is almost an identical so flavor fun. profile to yeah. Tropical Thunder. Mm -hmm. But uh, we also got uh, Amino Plus. The Amino Plus. It's uh, an all-natural caffeine, light, uh, low amount. Yeah, uh, 75. 75 milligrams of yep. all-natural caffeine mm -hmm. along with your uh, BCA profile, which, yes. again, it's uh, um, Pat nailed the flavoring again. Yes. So, awesome. We're, everything is being relaunched this Thursday. Uh, we'll put a full blog up. I'll put it in my Instagram story so everybody mm -hmm. can see. With uh, It'll send you to blog, read all about it. But it is an all-natural. New labels, new color, new everything. Yes. A lot it, of time went into this. A lot of time and a lot of uh, a lot of money, mm -hmm. because again, our our thing that we whenever we sat down, we all agreed that it was time, because mm -hmm. there's things, there's some new things that we're going to bring to Axe and Sledge as well over the next three months, that we've already fucking <laughs> just <laughs> we're letting it rip with everything fucking we right, got. Dude. But uh, 
uh, there'll be some new things coming over to Axe and Sledge as well, mm -hmm. uh, so that there is no longer any competition between the two brands. They are very definitive in where they are, and we know that there is a huge market of people that take keto, vegan, all natural, are no artificial flavorings, no artificial sweeteners, mm -hmm. those type of products, and they're they're shit. So we said, "Fuck it, we're gonna we're gonna put our legs into that. Yep. We're gonna put our we're gonna jump. We're not putting our legs in. We're jumping right fucking in yep. and saying, here we are." Mm -hmm. I'm excited about it. Yep, site's getting revamped. Um, can be loading it with tons of more informational pieces for all of our customers. Yes. Info on keto, basics for keto, basics for dieting, nutrition, hydration. Yes. How to use the products. Yes. Everything that, uh, it, it gets too cluttered under one brand. Yes. Because we do such different things. So mm -hmm. uh, I can't wait to show everyone. Yes, absolutely. It's going to be great. Yeah. I'm pumped. Like we said, it's uh, and you, you described it well. Described it well. It's uh, it's going to be informational based. Mm -hmm. We want to inform people and just keep it exciting because mm -hmm. there's there are two different bases of of customers. Yes. I'm not drinking the vegan protein. It's tasty. Mm -hmm. I like farm fed. Yep. I like homemade. But then there's people that are like that vegans. Their shit. Mm -hmm. It's like you right now. It's not that you don't like farm fed. No. Vegan just or the vegan protein just fits your fucking macros way better. Yep. And then we also have a ton more plan for amen too. other products that we're flavoring right now that are out of fucking hand maybe some really cool apparel i don't know maybe making if you were if you were going to do a keto diet and and that type or paleo diet mm -hmm. this brand is all you yeah i mean when you're we're you're on these certain diets the the idea is to feel better yes the idea is to everything should be functioning Overall better like inflammation goes down your mental capacity is through the roof mm -hmm. Uh, if you're taking shit supplements, it's going to affect that every yes. time. Absolutely. So, two brands. We're going to hold ourselves to that high regard, no mm -hmm. matter where we are and what we do. So I'm excited about it. Yes, me too. Mike played a huge role with everything when it comes to the the look. Um, Pat put everything he had into the into the products themselves with fucking. <laughs> it is what I learned is through this whole process. It's incredibly fucking difficult to flavor things whenever it comes to all natural, uh, all natural ingredients. It's very difficult. Very hard. Hats off to our manufacturers and how much Pat put into it. Just the overall team. It's good, I'm excited. And then Axe and Sledge is gonna get a little boost here too from some other stuff. Things that I've been, mm -hmm. I've been dying to do, but you can't do certain things like this until you have a solid, solid, Solid company. Yes. Maybe a new creatine. I'm excited. Maybe I'll be excited to use it whenever I can use my fucking arm. Maybe it tastes really good. Maybe it's stupid awesome. I'm excited. <laughs> I took Dozer, by the way. Other yes. product from Axe and Sledge that came out is a sleep aid. Mm -hmm. We're launching it. The stores, the stores actually are going to have it soon, so please make sure you're sporting your local stores. Put the foot traffic in the motherfuckers. Yeah. Go say hi. Take your mask off. Give them a kiss. I don't know. Lick their face. Fuck them up. <laughs> Ask for another hand job. <laughs> Don't do those things, please. I was just kidding. <laughs> want me to suck your dick? I don't know. I'm so excited I can touch somebody. What do you want me to do? Somebody did ask for a for a blowjob. It was funny as fuck. I know. You, you, you're you ready to give it to him. You told us all about it. Two tens. Two tens. I'm not giving anything. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll say this right now. The best fucking thing about that you said with Lamar was that Mimi posted about or was talking about how do you eat pussy? <laughs> Oh yeah, Remember, like, like guys that don't eat pussy stick their ass up in the air. And <laughs> you get in that motherfucker like a sniper. Like a sniper, yeah, dude. You gotta, there, you gotta, down, you, that leg up. you gotta open them hips, dude. Get them in. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, I lost where I was going. Oh, dozer. Yeah. So I've been having trouble sleeping because of my fucking arm mm -hmm. and uh, the painkillers fucked me up there in the beginning. And then, uh, so my sleep's been off a little bit. So whenever we wanted to do the, the sleep aid dozer. And grab it. Yeah, pull it up. Boop, boop. Thank you, sir. So uh, I, I, I like sleep aids. Whenever I, was pr whenever I was prepping for shows, you needed a sleep aid just because of the amount of clenbuterol you were running, all the trend, all the shit. The problem is, is I didn't, what I didn't like about it was the fact that I still woke up groggy as fuck. Groggy as fuck. 
drove me nuts. It would put me down, but I'm like, where's the, th- where's the sleep aid that I can just take that like, I just go into REM sleep. Yeah. And I can wake up. Normal. I can wake up and it doesn't knock cause being knocked out is like for every action, there's a reaction. If you get knocked out more than likely, you're going to have a hard time waking up. So with those are our goal with this was to get you into REM sleep and have a solid night's sleep, not knock you the fuck out and have you wake up groggy as shit Mm -hmm. because we are a feel company. I want to feel good. So that's one of the reasons that we didn't put in the melatonin. We had the the melatonin is known to be addictive. It can be. um, And I don't use dozer every night. Mm -hmm. I used it on, uh, I used it on Thursday night last week. And then I tried it again on Saturday. Bro. Awesome. Woke up, no problems. Tastes Felt really great. good too. Tastes good, but this is uh, this has been th- this apparently I didn't know how widely used sleep aids were. Neither did I. A Huge lot of people, product. A lot of people use them. Yeah. Um, and uh, our goal with this, because I know every person out there abuses anything that they fucking do. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't recommend taking a sleep aid every single night. Mm-hmm. I never will say that because then you get into the habit, and then you it's hard to get out of. Same same thing as taking a pre-workout every single day. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm a non-stim guy. Non-stim guy because then I don't get addicted to the fucking stimulants. That's why I take seventh gear a couple days a week, three days a week, something like that. Mm-hmm. Because it's easy to get addicted to a certain feeling. So you always have to be careful and be mindful of it all. That's why it's always good to have two pre-workouts. Yep. Pump days, nuts days. Maybe mix them together. Put them together? Know, put them together, see what happens. Love that. It's like fucking your girl to gangster rap. <laughs> Never know what's going to happen. She might like it too much and be bad for you. <laughs> And you're going to question your white whiteness. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, uh, Dozer, it's going to be in stores this week, and then we will be releasing it to the public here. But go put some foot traffic. If you are somebody that's in the sleep aids, go check it out online. It's good shit. We're excited. Mm-hmm. Did you guys say the flavor? I don't think you did. Oh, no, we didn't. It is honey lemon tea. It's delicious. I'm, I'm, I'll be honest. I thought that was the stupidest fucking flavor that a pet brought in. Sometimes he, he throws me for a loop. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, are you being too much of a boomer right now? <laughs> like, honey. Hey, let's honey curl up tea. with a thing. Of- Fuck you. And then I taste it. I'm like, God damn it. I'm going to eat my words right now. And Pat's going to eat me alive. Fucking put me in my place and just tell me what an idiot I am. Sure enough, that's what happened. <laughs> it's delicious. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, Hannah even looked at it. She's like, because... Her sleep's way worse than mine. Mm-hmm. It's it's disturbing. Nine month pregnant woman, disturbing. Yeah, and uh, she's like, "Can I take this?" I'm like, "Listen, babe, we're almost there. Just hold off for a little bit. Mm-hmm. You and you won't be able to take it either when the baby comes." Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want you staying asleep. Um. No, good stuff. I'm excited for mm-hmm. everything that we have coming. We're we're. We definitely didn't slow down. That's for sure. Fuck no. <laughs> and and I'll through this whole thing, I'll say some of the things with the stores. Uh, we're big support local people. Mm-hmm. Whenever this went down, uh, that's one of the reasons that this is in stores now. Blueberry muffin. The only place you can buy homemade blueberry muffin is in your st- is in the stores. Mm-hmm. So go to our store locator on our website. Type in your uh, type in your zip code. Mm-hmm. You'll find your nearest store. Go to that store, put some foot traffic in, show them support, buy something. Like I said, go in and tell them, Seth Ferozzi told me I can get 10% off anything or a hand job. They'll definitely give you the 10% off. And if you don't get the 10% off and get a hand job and said, don't you come bitching to me. (laughs) Take that hand job like a man. (laughs) Even if it's from another man. (laughs) Homo. (laughs) Homo things. I love It's a gift, Todd. (laughs) It was a gift, Todd. (laughs) Not giving it back. (laughs) <laughs> um, but uh, during this time, uh, this was uh, stores were way down. Mm-hmm. Store sales were way down. Uh, all our stores, we showed them tremendous support. They returned it, showed us tremendous support. Uh, please make sure that you support your your local, even if it, like we said, your pizza joints, all that shit. If you have a local nutrition store in there, go show them some love. Go buy a pre workout. Uh, just get to know them. Shoot the shit with them. Laugh, carry on, show that support, show them, show what you are to your community. Because I will say this, if you owned a small business in your community and you noticed a drastic, if you noticed a 50% decrease in sales, that hurts. Yeah. So, um, uh, no, it was good. Uh, They, 
we were supporting each other through this time. It was awesome. Yeah. So, Dozer, Blueberry Muffin. A couple other things. Yep. New stuff coming from everything. AMN this week, this week Thursday night, 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. If you're into it, if you know somebody that is that, that this is the way they run their life, please tell them. Let them know that there is a supplement company coming out mm-hmm. that's fucking firing on all cylinders from that standpoint. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Strawberry vegan protein. Bro, I... I it's stupid good. <laughs> I don't... I love I, strawberry. I... I I like strawberry, but there was never a strawberry protein that I was like, oh, like whenever <laughs> I love how those two, Mike and Pat do things like when it comes in, like all excited, like we were flavor, we were, we were flavor testing some new stuff for Axe and Sledge. And I'm like, I get to be the biggest critic in the world. And then when it comes to vegan protein, I'm like, oh man, I got to kind of be nice, <laughs> but this shit's going to fucking vegan protein. It's going to taste like fucking cardboard. The peanut butter banana. I was like. Okay, might yeah. have to eat my own words right now. Yeah, I mean, we tasted those couple other brands uh, from down the store. It, bro, it was rough. Heebie jeebies. I didn't, I didn't believe in doing it when we first tried some other Fuck companies. No. I'm like, this is it's trash. It can't get any. But that's better. where it comes in. Where, 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 this is where it comes that we're willing to take the hits on spending the money. Mm-hmm. I mean, like even even our manufacturers like questioned the direction we want to go in sometimes because no one else ever does it it's a little it's a it's it's just uh bro it's because we're betting on ourselves mm-hmm. that's all it is every time every time <laughs> every time it's good i'm excited it's uh it's quality it, everything is i didn't think we'd ever take that route to be honest i didn't think we'd go this far with it and i'm i'm impressed people like feeling good man fucking right i do i do i like blowjobs <laughs> I don't know why anybody else wouldn't. How does vegan protein and blowjobs mix? I don't know. They just do stop questioning. Just wait. The fuck up. Just wait. They do. Thursday night, you'll you'll know. Thursday night, one. Yep. <laughs> Babe, I just bought vegan protein for us. Blowjob. <laughs> it, hap- it happened last week. <laughs> what was that thing? What was that thing we were talking about last week? Oh. When, whenever we were talking about Mike, Mike and Amanda's, uh, uh, she was like, like the birthday thing, <laughs> like, like when you buy your significant other a really great birthday gift or anniversary gift or Christmas gift or anything, like you buy your, you're like, <laughs> like as a guy, as a guy, you're like, oh, I'm gonna buy my wife the greatest birthday gift because I'm getting a blowjob out of it, <laughs> like. I'm getting a blowjob on her birthday because of the gift I got her. It's like it's my birthday too. It's like you're looking at two two different gifts, and you're like, this one, this one I'm getting a killer blowjob from. You're like for sure. This is a blowjob gift. <laughs> this one. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking so true. Can There's I help no you? Guy. Which one? Can I? I'll have the I'll have the blowjob <laughs> handbag. I mean, <laughs> you're buying her a person. You're like this purse. This purse is nice. This purse is decently priced. She knows about this one. Hand job. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe a hand job. This is a smile and a hug. <laughs> this one here is the, oh shit, I'm definitely sucking your dick later. <laughs> yeah, I'll take this one. All right, right here. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were fucking with it. works. Like giving Amanda a birthday blowjob. <laughs> Tell me, don't tell me I'm wrong. The, the, How the, many the times guy, have the, you... The guy logic with it is fucking hysterical. Absolutely. <laughs> if, you, if you're a man and not thinking like that, or you don't get to think like that, or you're not, man, you're doing something wrong. You got to. I, you got to think like that. I like, I like doing the little uh, necessity tasks and thinking I'm so worthy of a blowjob. Absolutely. Now. Like, yeah, I took that trash bag out. <laughs> you, I don't see no trash in here. Do you see any trash? I see, a, I see a hair tie on your wrist. <laughs> Or like, hey, can you get the cutting board out? Yep, I know where that is. <laughs> and it's not in there. She's like, it's over in this drawer. I know. <laughs> Guys love being told good job <laughs> for something that should just go without being said. Bro, absolutely. Hey, babe, I put my my laundry in the in the basket. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I've Everything's still inside out, you asshole. <laughs> Oh, it's so hurtful. 
I'm brutal to live with. I am tough to live with. I'm no fucking peach. I make a mess everywhere I go. Yeah. I'm really bad at it. I've been doing a much, much better job of it. But uh, I'm so bad with ordering shit and the cardboard buildup and the fucking oh, shit bro. everywhere. Uh, well, yesterday it was too windy. I was going to start a fire because yeah. there's, <laughs> bro, our front area will fill up with boxes so quick, especially like the baby stuff. Mm-hmm. Dean sent us a ton of baby stuff, by the way. Like, what a fucking guy. Fucking Hugh Jackman. Yeah, he is. He got a double message on Saturday that he looked for like Hugh Jackman. It was the exact same message twice from that, two different people. Thick hair. He does have thick hair. Yeah. He's got like the quarantine hair mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. He is a thick fuck too right now. Yeah. He's pretty big. He is pretty big. Mm-hmm. Dino. Dean Arino. Fucking love Dean. He's a riot. I love the Dean scream. Oh, yeah. I can't do it. I can't replicate it. I, I want to see him do it. I want to see his face do it. I don't believe him. I don't believe it's him. Oh, for sure it is. <laughs> that fucking guy. I love, I mean, that's that fucking good fun shit that people do just to get fired up. Mm-hmm. It's like, how how can't you be into it? I don't know. I want to I wanna fuck it. We, I mean, I did Ric Flair's every day. Every day going to Cheryl's, we do Ric Flair's. I loved he uh, he went into his room where his stepper's at, uh-huh. and there's just like Barbies and dolls and shit like all around it. He's like, what, what's what going fuck? on here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd definitely use that as an excuse why I can't get on it. Oh, oh there's shit. toys there. I can't. I remember getting ready for uh, nationals in, D- in Dallas because mm-hmm. the stepper. Adeline even mentioned about uh, the stepper. She's like, you've had that stepper for like, ever Mm -hmm. since i was born and i'm like i bought that stepper in 2009 so i mean it's 11 year old stepper Mm -hmm. that bitch has seen some time there are sweat there are rest rust marks from the sweat Mm -hmm. where i kept sweating on it it's wild man so uh i remember like i in the morning she adeline and i were inseparable she'd wake up with me and do cardio at six o'clock she was awake because we lived in a smaller house Mm -hmm. so i'd make her her breakfast and then she had a tray table and a seat that she would sit on right next to me as I did cardio in my cardio hallway. She'd sit there and eat all of her food and play while I did cardio right next to her every fucking day. Mm-hmm. I miss those times. I miss those times. Yep. That explains so much why that kid is like me so much. Mm-hmm. Borderline scary, by the way. She's an asshole sometimes. Such a good heart. But very fucking sure of herself at times. This weekend, I got a little taste of it. Like, she just, yeah, this is how I do things. I'm like, Ex- excuse me? <laughs> Fuck? And then, like, I question it. I'm like, okay, you are. You're, you, mm-mm. Sounds, school works. Sounds I get, like I'm someone getting, I know. I, I get messages from her school, from her teachers, how good of a student she is. So just gets everything timely, doesn't miss anything. Yeah. I'm like, well, you made it fucking easy enough, you dumbasses. <laughs> It's fucking How about you fucking challenger? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. They're not going to. It's okay. But um uh hell of a hell of a podcast here. I enjoyed this. That Let was everybody fun. know a little bit about some stuff. Yeah. I I I, I like touching on the, the I I'm glad that people are asking those questions about success and trolls and negativity from people in their life. That means that they're they're pushing themselves. Mm-hmm. Those little things, don't let any of that bother you. If Jimmy from the fucking neighborhood wants to be a dick, let him be a dick. Fuck him. Don't even talk to him. Just pretend like the cocksucker don't exist. If you really, if you want to get into an argument, open your mouth and go after him. Otherwise, just let it go because it technically doesn't matter. All that matters is what you do in your life. Do what you can for your family, your people, your business, your employees, your job, your coworkers. Do your shit. Be the best motherfucker you can be. Do not be one-dimensional. Multi-dimension. Whatever you're doing, Hold dick that motherfucker. Go balls deep. Mm-hmm. It's good shit. Other than that, Shane, have a couple questions here. Some new questions. Yep. This is, uh, we are no longer doing the Barstool Sports game just simply because we ran out of good questions in there. Mm-hmm. We've been on the hunt. We actually are, we have ordered a game. The one that you ordered was too much of a game. It didn't have the questions. But this year, we got some questions. And uh, I'm excited for them. Mm-hmm. So, everybody... It's time for the little game we play at the end. Please do not take any of this shit serious. We are going to say as much fucked up shit as possible because we're just going to let our minds roam. Pretend that, uh, almost pretend that you're not listening. (laughs) (laughs) 
That's what I try to do. <laughs> that way it's just a fucking shit show. <laughs> But uh, and these are the things that it's good for the coworkers on the job site, your your family, anybody. Text them this question just to get a rise out of them, lighten the mood, um, and go with it. So, without further ado, Shane, let's hear your your questions. Yep. Uh, what word sounds dirty but isn't? Oh. <laughs> oh, everybody's favorite word is moist. Moist. <laughs> moist. Oh. That's a rough one. <laughs> that doesn't. What do you? What, what's the first thing that pops in your head whenever you say moist? Like vagina. Vagina. Next. Non-sexual. Moist. Like a. I think of like a. I think of like a disgusting rag. Yeah. It's like been sitting there. Like moist. Know, yeah. Moist. I don't know. I don't know why I think disgusting either. Also a sponge. I think of a moist towelette. <laughs> moist. Like oh, a, oh, clean. Yeah. That's clean. Oh, you think clean. I go to the dirty route. Moist. But or vagina like a, is definitely one. Or like a moist like a really good moist cake. <laughs> like Like how do you describe like, like a the moist cake? a moist dessert? <laughs> I love it's my cake. It's wet moist. without it's wet without being liquid. <laughs> like it's just moist. moist. <laughs> That's the greatest description I ever heard. Thank Wet you. without being liquid. <laughs> Moist. That's the definition. Is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, it is. That's the best definition I ever heard. If it's not, fucking change that shit. It should be. If it's be. not, it should be. Moist. Moist. Wet, Wet. without being liquid. <laughs> mm. Soft. <laughs> but moist. Soft and wet without being liquid. It's yes. slightly wet, damp, or humid is the definition. <laughs> like my nutsack. So. I like your definition better. Way better. Uh, I have two. You, so dongle. Dongle is like, it sounds dirty, but it's not. I don't even, I've never like heard. Like a dongle for a like. A dongle, like uh, this is a dongle. Yeah, like a, it's a. An, electronic an adapter. Term? An adapter. Oh. Like, you know, the, the the dongle for headphones? I, I didn't know it was called a dongle. Yeah. It's called a dongle. It's I just called, a called dongle. the connector thing. Yeah. It's That's what dongle. us IT specializationers call it. Yeah. <laughs> what what else word? you got? Uh, cum laude. Cum laude? Yeah. Oh, Isn't like, that like a status? Yeah. yeah. Like, for graduation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Magna cum laude. I but hate it looks like cum laude. Come. <laughs> I come a lot too some, sometimes. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. That's pretty funny. I liked it. Here, what television show would you watch if it included full nudity? I mean, I'd pick the one. I'm trying to think the hottest. hottest I mean, moment. at its time, at its time, who wouldn't want to watch Friends? Watch yeah. Friends with all them chicks all naked and shit. Yeah. Yep. See Joey's dick flopping everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I you, love Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, you wanted to see Joey, not Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> I had to say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, other show? Um, I don't know. The other shows I watched, I already saw a good bit of titties in them. I've watched shows that I don't know if I'd want to see nude. Yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really. Friends is the only one that came to my head with a bunch of people, like with Courtney Cox and Jennifer Aniston, <laughs> Joey. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't even know Matt LeBlanc. <laughs> <laughs> you know a lot about him. You even know his non-TV name. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was more of a Ross fan. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? David Schwimmer. <laughs> I like that he was into dinosaurs and shit. Like he's he, the museum guy. Yeah, yeah. I like Joey because he was a moron that just wanted pussy. How you doing? <laughs> he just ate. He was an actor. <laughs> the world's worst actor in a show. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> How good is he at acting to be an, an acting moron? And then who is it? Chandler. That's uh, what Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry. He had a couple good movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He liked drugs a lot too. Oh really? Oh yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Big partier. Yes, huge. Like cocaine or yeah, oh. like big problems with it for a while. Well, that'll mm-hmm. happen. Yep. You do it once, you're gonna do it again. Mm-hmm. You do it twice, you're probably gonna do it a lot. 
Do you remember seeing what uh, Jennifer Aniston was making per episode? No. Google it, Shane, because I think what I'm going to say is way off, but I don't think it is. I mean, what's his name? Uh, uh, Charlie Sheen was one of the highest paid actors for Two and a Half Men. He was probably making- yeah, I'm not even going to say it till I see it. But it's a crazy number. Oh, the internet's a little bit on the fritz. What you got going on? Oh, Tanning. I think this was. Uh... Um, she makes during her time on Friends. Jennifer Aniston made seventy-five thousand per episode in season three, eighty-five thousand in season four, hundred thousand in season five, hundred twenty-five thousand in season six, seven hundred fifty thousand in season seven and eight, and one million in seasons nine and ten. Oh, bro! A million an episode. Mm-hmm. That's whenever. I think uh, I think Charlie Sheen was getting like two million an episode. That's probably around that. That that's why she was making big money, million dollars an episode. That's huge. Well, yeah, that it was weekly, right? Yeah. Like, was that a season? How many? There was just like there, there was, was a way, season. I feel like there was way more episodes per season with sitcoms back then. Oh yeah, for sure. She had twenty million total each per uh, twenty-seven. She's making some money. Yeah, yeah she, did, she did okay. Oh no! Internet. I wonder who. I wonder who was like the least paid out of all of them. Probably, uh, probably Chandler, <laughs> or no, probably uh, David Schwimmer. <laughs> he sucked the most. <laughs> he's the biggest pussy. Oh, he man. might be tough in real life. I don't oh, know. He's probably a fucking. He's probably a really nice he's guy too. A super guy with a big dick and just fucking women love him. Uh, LeBlanc did. He, he, he made, had the lowest salary. <laughs> Guy I like the most. <laughs> he actually didn't get paid. You guys are getting paid? <laughs> he had the lowest salary, but he's net worth $80 million. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Really? And then David Schwimmer was 85. Lisa Kudrow was 90. Matthew Perry, $120 million. Courtney Cox, 150 Jennifer Hansen, 300 Holy shit. Excuse me? What was that? Three hundred million dollars she's worth. Mm-hmm. Man, she did some investing. She's got a lot of endorsements, cosmetics. Oh uh, yeah, you're right. There's yeah. so much money in there. Oh yeah, the older you get, the better you look. The more the more cosmetic shit, big time. All right, next question. Uh, last question. Um, last one already. Yeah, there's only three. I know. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> what would you not want to find in your partner's bedside drawer? huge black dildo (laughs) that's every guy's first thought like i just don't want a bigger dick than mine it's like those memes the memes with like like the the, like my my dick and (laughs) and her dildo it's Uh, um yeah uh, i mean it i mean whenever you're in can't get too mad at that i can't get too mad at a dildo everybody's got to get pleasured themselves um I'd probably say like a burner phone. Yeah, <laughs> that'd fuck. be the worst. I take or, or I'd like take a twelve old, inch dildo over a burner phone any day. Of the fuck. Or like week. old pictures, like with like other other people you don't like. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a rough one. Fuck yeah. Uh uh-uh, uh, good call. And like like someone that I knew was like a serious relationship at one point. Like or, that pissed me off. Or yeah, uh, yeah, I wouldn't. The burner phone would set me off. Yeah, I might cut a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, I don't like that. That's uh-uh. Mm-mm. The burner phone's it. Yeah. I'll take the dildo. Maybe a vibrator. Maybe we could both use it. I don't know. Is that for <laughs> my ass or yours? <laughs> oh my God. What do I have to do with that? <laughs> I mean, I'm open. <laughs> just I mean, figure it it's out. just us in here and the camera and all my fans on the podcast. We're just spitballing. <laughs> Let's just get some ideas on the board. Let's just go. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, it's fucking great. What about dude. you, Shane? Yeah, oh, let's hear it. I don't know. Shane's like, oh, I already used the dildo with her, <laughs> so I'm okay with that. Don't have one of those. <laughs> I don't know. That's hard. No, there's nothing really. I mean, for me, there's nothing really that would like uh, that would upset me more than something that would show any type of uh, untrust. 
like distrust. Mm-hmm. If I had that, that's what we're doing. Other than that, like there's a, there's another penis in there. It's okay, as long as it's not someone else's like like molded penis. Yeah. I mean, even if it's a famous porn star's molded penis, I'll be okay with that. Like, you're a fan. Yeah. You're allowed to support and support another person. Yeah. I'm cool with support it. Support local. Yeah, got to. Um, uh, <laughs> There's nothing really that would throw me off too much. I'd be, like, cool with it. Yeah. If, if you're into fucking something weird, everybody's hey. got something weird that they're into. A lot of people try and hide that, and then that creates, like, this crazy negative shit in your head of... I'm like, oh, man, I'm embarrassed, or I can't tell this person that I'm into this fucking weird shit. I'm cool with it. As long as it's not a fucking burner phone. You cunt. <laughs> you lying, cheating motherfucker. <laughs> no, this is my work phone. This is my work phone. Fuck off. Fuck you. You don't have a job. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I would not be cool with that. No, yeah. That'd be the only thing. Other than that... um, no, I'm cool with anything. Yeah, I'm cool. I'd be, I'd probably, if anything, I might be upset that I'm not included in it. Yeah, like if you found money that you didn't know about. No, I just want some of it. Yeah, exactly. But I'd be mad that you didn't show me. No, I maybe. wouldn't want to find it in there. Is it, is, yeah, I yeah, I wouldn't, I, yeah, I wouldn't want to find that. Oh, I wouldn't want to find Vegemite. Well, that listen, shit's disgusting. Listen, listen, to, listen to him about money. Fuck you both. If I found money, I'd just want some of it. How much money you hoard on your own that she don't know about? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> some my probably, She probably knows about it all. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> we know about everything. We, we, we have ours to cash stack ourselves <laughs> together. <laughs> but uh, no, I wouldn't be mad if I found money. I'd just be kind of like, so why didn't you tell me? I'd be like, wow. What are we doing with that? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want to be. I just want to be included. <laughs> That's, all. That's it. <laughs> kind of like the dildo thing. I just want to be included. I want to know why I wasn't included. I'm upset that I'm not included. Where'd you get that? Did you order did, it online? Yeah. Did you go to a store? Yeah. Wh- wh- whose dick is it? Where'd the money come from? Were you selling your body? Can I watch? Was it fun? Can I do it too? Can we do it together? <laughs> <laughs> like a two for one deal. We might get better deals out there. I don't know. Got to be a steal somewhere. Yeah, right? This was not to be taken serious, everyone. This was a complete joke. I'm not selling my body for money. Don't send me a message. And Kim does not have a keto book. <laughs> no, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Where are you selling your body? Internet. <laughs> the internet. Oh, oh man. Nope, I'm cool with dildos. I'm cool with money. Just no burner phone. That's all that would upset me. <clears throat> well, good stuff, everybody. Yeah, thank you. I enjoyed. Have a good day. Enjoy the week. Make sure you, if it's nice outside, go outside. Even if it's raining, fuck it. Go outside if it's raining. Yeah. Get some fresh air. A little bit of vitamin D from the sun. American Made Nutrition launch Thursday, May 21st, 8 p.m. Dozer Blueberry Muffin in the store. We still have a little bit of Pineapple Express left on the sub site as well. So if you haven't picked up your 7th Gear Pineapple Express, do so. Mm-hmm. Other than that, go check out Wolf's Fish, too, if you're in the mood for good seafood. If you are a seafood fan, wolfsfish.com, Seth Ferrosi 10 gets you 10% off. Send him a message. Tell him we sent you. Give him some love. It's the best fucking seafood. Sea, the swordfish steaks, fucking got to get some. Yep. Fire. All right, Nat. All right, everybody. Have a good day. Fucking A. Love your wife. Slap an ass. Kiss your kids. Lift some weights. Run in circles. Do good shit. <laughs>